Wow, that was really great theme music. Are we ever going to get rid of this bit? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's so good. I, you know, I just exported one of our episodes and got to see the video again, hear the music. Uh, just again, a shout out to Scott Little, who did our music. He wrote it and produced it. I think he played on it. And then Cullen, of course, put together that little video for us. We love putting GIFs in Canva. <laughs> Canva's well, the best tool. Not sponsored. Not sponsored, but we do yeah. it. <laughs> Welcome back to Glee Boot. No. I knew it. I knew you were going to say it. I, I accidentally it. willed that into the universe because as soon as you're like, welcome back to me, I said, glee boot in my head. My, that's that's all me. Underprepared yeah. for this podcast all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> this is the only way we can get people to get on our glee podcast, guys. <laughs> Deceit. Deception and lies. <laughs> uh, uh, welcome back to Not My Fantasy, the show where we talk about our favorite and least favorite fairy tale and fantasy films and the lore that inspired them i'm cullen and i'm hannah and today we have one of my favorite podcasts on here we have katrina and jeff of the fairy tellers hello we're excited to be be here here. yeah welcome welcome so excited to have you um do you want to just uh briefly kind of talk about your pod to the listeners Sure. Um, So yeah, we're the fairy tellers podcast. We have been recording for, I think, three and a half years now, which is kind of crazy to think about. But we talk about uh, folklore and fairy tales and the cultures that inspire and retell those stories. They just I just listened listened to your episode on the Trojan War. Yeah, Yeah, we're excited. Weirdly, uh, we're getting ready to be uh, talking about Snow White. And so we had to start with the Trojan War. <laughs> this is how it goes with Katrina on our part. We did a Beauty and the Beast uh, series. We were going to do a Beauty and the Beast episode. She's like, well, before we do that episode, we have to do an episode about this. And then we'll do the Beauty and the Beast. And then after that episode, I was like, oh, now we have to do an episode on this. And then we'll get to the Beauty and the Beast. So she was like teasing it like the, the next episode is going to be Beauty and the Beast. And it was like months <laughs> later because we just had yeah. to keep going down. And so that's Katrina. She's like, we're going to talk about seeing beauty. So you know what we need to do? Go back to the Trojan War. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I Naturally. mean, it makes sense. And that is one of the fun things about your pod. Is so we're tied to movies, right? So until yeah. we're exploring more foreign films, we're kind of stuck a little sometimes in like Western. There's, because mm-hmm. Hollywood is like, likes to remake the same Western stories again and again. Yeah. And so the great thing when you're not tied to media, you can just explore all these stories all over the world and how they mm-hmm. morph and span over the ages. Yeah, and it wow. and it's fascinating watching stories uh, just as they go through time and spread out in different directions and then look at like the same time period, but then what happened in two different places in the same time period with a story. Mm. I mean, we'll even go on a mini journey of that today. With oh, Disney absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, had to, I had to listen to Villeneuve audio because I was like, I'm not... Yeah. I don't have time to read this. Yeah, it was, it's, uh, is it novel? I'm pretty sure it's novel length. Like it's not short story. It's like. It was five and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of listening. Novel. I'm like, that's longer than Return of the King. And yeah. <laughs> not more, better. <laughs> not, <laughs> not better. No. It's, it's more prep than you normally do for this podcast is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. So, Okay. <laughs> So today we're talking about uh, La Belle and La Bette from 1946, or Beauty and the Beast, the Jean Cocteau version. It is a classic movie. It's very influential, I think, in the development of this fairy tale. It is uh, a French movie. We may know France as the place uh, that Emily in Paris is set in on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's I know that's what everyone Also Les Mis. Les Mis. Oh, yeah. Also famously set there. <laughs> Yes, uh, it is uh, where those you in the su- in the sewer system. Oh. Sewer system, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's where those YouTubers that stopped me on the Santa Monica Pier were from, and they asked me to <sighs> list five French words and point France out on a map. And I took four semesters of French, so I could I could nice. not very well, but I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think I made it in the video. <laughs> I still yeah, have, you weren't embarrassing enough. It was on our to-do list for last week and I didn't get to it. Um, we'll we'll have to week, get it for the next Beauty and the Beast this movie. Is, yeah. 
I love that idea. Also, As Above, So Below, also set there. It's a great horror yeah. movie. You should watch it. Found footage, amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joan of Arc's Life, set there. Took <laughs> place there. <laughs> Ratatouille. Yeah. I think they're all missing the obvious. <laughs> obvious. So oh, obvious. Which means the Ratuzical, Remy, the Ratatouille <laughs> musical is also <laughs> set in France. Uh, so there's yeah. some French lore for you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the history of France now. No. Uh, so <laughs> I have never seen this movie before. Uh, it's But it's a pretty direct adaptation of the Beaumont story. And it introduces some elements that I feel like are going to continue as we develop what Beauty and the Beast is to the modern listener, like suitor villain character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was this all our first time watching this movie? Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'd heard, yeah. I'd heard about it before because of the makeup. Like that's kind of a yeah. big, yeah, kind of like cinema history sort of a thing, the makeup with Did you know that beast? Jeff uh, studied film like at uh, university? Oh, really? Yeah, that's more my angle of the. So your podcast is again right, right at my alley. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, like so I, on our podcast, I'm. No, I hadn't seen it. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> on our podcast. I'm definitely the idiot where I'm just like I'm asking the questions that <laughs> other idiots will be asking if they're listening to us. That's my role <laughs> too. Idiots. That's that's terrible to say. Like oh, our our, <laughs> our listeners, they're listener. all smarter than me. I'm the dumbest one dummy. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So did you guys watch on HBO Max? Yeah. Yeah. So and before the movie starts, did you guys watch the little blurb with um Gary Adam what's his name from Myth and Fest, Adam Savage? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you had Adam uh, Savage? Yeah. I'm like, I watched well, he... mine through uh it was like Amazon video. Yeah. Oh, and so I did not see Adam interesting. Savage. Oh yeah. It, was, yeah, it was him and Guillermo del Toro talking about it. It was oh. mostly Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. Yeah. Guillermo talking del Toro, specifically about the makeup. Yeah. Who famously Guillermo famously touched me on the shoulder once when I explained how to validate his parking. And wow. said, Thanks, son. So I'm nice. Guillermo del Toro's oh. son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You're his nice. Son. What are those residuals roll in? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I cried watching Pinocchio when they're talking about fathers and sons. I was like, Guillermo, <laughs> like that's dad, my dad. <laughs> <laughs> though that is actually a very good movie which yeah. i have i have little affection for the pinocchio story as someone who read that book as a child so i'm like okay in order for a pinocchio movie to be like that good like you gotta try so yeah but anyway would recommend okay. watching on hmo max so you can listen it's maybe about like a five yeah eight minute conversation where they're just sort of you see scenes of the movie and they're talking about specifically the beast makeup um the way they use lighting to really capture the uh, sort of the the feel of fantasy films that sort of played on now. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Would recommend. No, nice. very very well made. Like some of the even when like the special effects are like corny now because right. they're old. There's still yeah. like this theatrical art to them. Yeah. yeah, and there were some that it was like you know having being someone that likes reading and studying about this type of thing like. I'm like, I think I know how they did this, but I feel like I should know exactly right. how they did this because it was such, you know, like the technology. Some of them were really surprising as far as like, wow, that worked really well. And I'm not exactly sure how. They, yeah. Uh, Are you talking specifically about when she came out of that wall? That's what I'm thinking of too. Yeah. I'm thinking, the one I'm thinking of is actually where it's like, she was looking at the mirror and it was her own reflection. And then it like faded and it became the beast's reflection yeah. i think like and that was all in one shot and so i'm thinking of like if you're having to do some sort of like a mask you can't mask it and have her reflection unless you pre-record so i'm like trying to think of how they how they did that right. and i'm still not exactly sure um but there are lots of things where you do know you're like oh it's going backwards but it was like that's still kind of a cool thing to show like yeah yeah magic or whatever um, wait they weren't flying at the end oh the flying part okay. that was a really great part too oh i'm gonna have something to say like about the <laughs> flying thing because i feel like if they could not pull it off, which I didn't feel like they could, <laughs> um, they were not tied into that. That wasn't like part of like any of the stories is flying to a new right. location. Yeah. So they they truly could have chosen any way to have them exit that scene, but they purposefully went out of their way to choose flying. Mm. And then did they pull it off in their special effects? I don't know if they did. I liked it. I liked it. I, I did That's too. Fair. I was surprised. Was kind of I was surprised by it. I was like, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I liked the effect. I thought it was a strange, like, storytelling yes. choice to have them fly off. But yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, and to his kingdom. And I was like, wait, this isn't his castle? 
Where are we? <laughs> That's my main question. So who's, my who's, here? I have a question. Yeah, whose arm castle is this? <laughs> yeah. Apparently Artemis, I guess. Artemis, yeah, Diana. Shout out to <laughs> Fan of the Opera. You know, the arm. That's what the I... arm. Uh, Fan of the Opera with Minnie Driver. Yeah. Yeah. She's the best part of anything she's in, including that movie. So the the arm candelabras. Yeah. Yeah. The, I was thinking of that movie with the arms, um, but then I was also thinking of the labyrinth where there's uh, this like arm of walls that like rubs all up on uh, the um, actress. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll I, I was to, like, uh, we'll this embodied that arms, someday. they're a real thing in um, cinematography. Yeah. The, the hand serving the plate. Yeah. <laughs> that was wild. So the, yeah, this movie came out in 1946 post-war and so it was made by Jean Cocteau this famous French artist and filmmaker with like a really small budget because funds were tight in post-war France but there's some yikes ahead so this guy was like friends with Nazi sympathizers including artists who were officially Nazi funded artists and he was like oh no we're trying to like subvert the Nazis but I don't really know and he was gay and he advocated for other gay men in the regime but maybe he wasn't the most intersectional. Coco Chanel, famously a Nazi, paid for his rehab. So like, not great. No, no, no. But let's, you know, the fact that he was gay, I think this story has really been influenced by the girls and the gays, especially as we <laughs> move on to Disney. So that's a wild one. That's kind of rare in the world of fairy tales. Yeah. Not as rare as you'd think, but... <laughs> We talked about Hans, so. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, like, oh, uh, the like queer community and art have always been like so close together just because it's like, there is like space for exploration. I, I don't, I, yeah. you know what I mean? Of like people who are more open to other people living their lives, I guess is yeah. like what I mean. Um, even though still not like welcoming and open and anything like that, but, um, and so in the art community, it's like throughout history, you always have, um, LGBTQ people, even though they still are having to hide who they are, but it's always good when we're actually able to see them, even if I wish that their influence was like greater felt yeah in in what they create like with Hans um yeah. I just I wish that he could have been allowed by society to like write more openly about his experience instead of having to hide everything behind like Obviously. snowmen yeah <laughs> snowmen <laughs> in love with an oven yeah 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 I mean well I kind of can't wait till we get to the controversial ending of Disney's Little Mermaid and how I feel like that's almost an ending that he couldn't give himself I, yeah that's, that's how I feel about uh that one not to yeah put my take out there in advance but you know I did I felt the gay in this as much as I felt the French the high <laughs> drama the swooning felt the French for sure <laughs> I felt the French I smelled the gets sure. through the tv <laughs> <laughs> like the like dramatic body language I found myself in the middle of the film and Jeff will tell you that this happens with me a lot where I'll like pause a movie to be like, no, oh, I need to reenact what that person just did because it was <laughs> so over the top. Like I need to like, for whatever reason, feel it on my body as well. And I would like, like pause it to be like, did that person just do this motion with their body? And I'll like creep along the wall. And yeah, I'm a normal, I'm a normal person to watch movies. with. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like that with Gollum, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you just... think as a child that I didn't act like Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh let's let's get into the lore of Beauty and the Beast. It uh truly really is a tale as old as time. It's evolved over the course of many cultures. Yeah. 
you know, Jeff and Katrina have a series on this in their <laughs> podcast. We're only going to briefly touch, you know, what they did. Uh, it is ATU type 425C called Beating the Beast. Hannah, do you know what the ATU is? I was like, this no. is going to be a surprise. I'm going to do this. It is the Arn Thompson Uther Index. So they basically take every fairy tale, folktale story and they put it in like a giant like taxonomy, like a categorization scheme to like keep track of like the variations and the slight variations. And Okay, I have heard of this. I didn't know what it was called though. Interesting. No. Uther. That's an interesting uh, word, name. Yeah. Uh, possibly used in someone's glee boot pitch. <laughs> possibly. Just gonna say, glee booties <laughs> listening, check it out. <laughs> check out our glee boot pitches. There's a character named Uther and Cullen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so this, we're gonna, we've mentioned, I think before, at least in the Frozen episode and the Brothers Groom episode, the difference between a literary tale and a folk tale. And this one is kind of both because it would like be, a literary it was a like oral tale and then it was put literary and the literary became oral and it's like zigzagged yep. uh and so like literary means someone wrote from their own imagination like lord of the rings or the snow queen and then folk tale means it's a story that people told orally like brothers grim tales like cinderella red riding hood snow white or egyptian mythology uh mm -hmm. so uh we'll be talking about three different versions of beauty and the beast uh to... not today <laughs> not today well sort of a little, both. Bit. A little okay. bit we'll be talking about the main beauty and the beast story and like three main versions of that and then we'll as we go into other film adaptations we'll kind of do follow some of the different branches it takes that was and... one of the things i thought was interesting about this movie was that it's an adaptation of a short or kind of story version that is an adaptation of a longer like novel yeah um, so it's like a, an adaptation of adaptation of adaptation of you know a fairy tale to yeah. all the way back in the beginning and the disney movie is almost an adaptation of this movie yep yeah. uh and disney does that a lot so you'll see yeah, adaptation I think, inception <laughs> exactly <laughs> truly yeah, truly yeah a Hunchback of Notre Dame, people will be like, oh, in the book, blah, 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 blah. But the Disney movie is almost more of an adaptation of, I think it was Cat, uh, 40s Hunchback. I think it was Catherine Hepburn was Esmeralda. Mm -hmm. And that one introduced, because it was around the Holocaust with the Romani persecution, that introduced the social justice element. Because in the Victor Hugo book, Esmeralda is a white child who is kidnapped, mm -hmm. uh, which is like this terrible stereotype. And so, but the that movie kind of reversed it and had like, no, she is Romani and she's advocating for their rights. And so that's kind of what sound, the Disney movie is about social justice, but the book is about like architecture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't know that about uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I had no idea. So I'm like, that's fascinating. Yeah, no, I, I found it out when I was trying to write a paper for a film class in grad school. That's the one where me and Hannah met bonding, laughing over old black and white movies like Queen nice. Kelly. Oh, there are some classic. Queen Kelly moments in this one. Oh, did you guys ever watch uh, The House on Haunted Hill with uh, Vincent Price? No. no. Oh, because when when Jeff and I were watching this movie, uh, La Bella La, La Bette, we I messaged him and I was like, it reminds me in some parts of the house on haunted hill in a good way <laughs> I feel like the over the top kind of like yeah nature of it. And, and things happen you're like i don't know why this is happening yeah or even yeah. like people uh, like on a glider gliding down yeah. a hallway yeah. and i'm like That's why so why are we gliding why are we gliding why? down the hallway you know but why not this is camp on a winter yeah met gala who this is camp this movie is direct is an adaptation of my preferred version of Beauty and the Beast, the Jean Marie Le Prince de Beaumont version, because that is the one that really makes the most sense as a like coherent story. And like if someone was like tell me the story of Beauty and the Beast, that's what I would say because like mm -hmm. it's very well done. Like you know, good for Beaumont because the villain story is like such a nightmare. It's it's so long and detailed in 
just a uh, unnecessary way. Because <laughs> even like the Snow Queen is very long and a lot of it doesn't exactly contribute to the plot. But at least it's kind of interesting. It's like a yeah. big adventure. Like there's a climax yeah. resolution, not like a climax and we still have two and a half hours left. Yeah. <laughs> the he... backstory on people's parents. That's what Colin texted me. He's like, they're talking about people's parents. And I was like, aren't they all dead? What does it matter? Yeah. <laughs> That's what uh, like Villeneuve, it, it, it just is so much description of like, the decorations in the house and like wallpaper. I don't need to know what the wallpaper looked like. I don't need to know what all the dishes were. Like this is too much detail. And so like the Beaumont version is like, okay, thank you. Like, yeah, she she saw it and was like, I can do something with this. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I don't think this story would be as well known if Beaumont hadn't stepped mm. in and given us that version that's like digestible. Yes. Because there's a lot of those French salon fairy tales that were designed to be like these big epics. Yeah. That people don't, no one really remembers them anymore. Like, they're, yeah. Who they has must... the time now? They had all the time in the world back then. Yeah. No, especially like the aristocrats who were like listening to those like stories. They were just sitting around like drinking wine and entertaining each other and laughing, uh, you know, before revolutions happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about that a little bit. They were they were podcasting essentially. They were podcasting oh, no. in their salon. <laughs> we're the aristocrats. Well, I'm the aristocrat. <laughs> oh no. We He's sometimes drink alcohol too and <laughs> laugh. Oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> we're the bourgeoisie. <laughs> so uh yeah, so the Beaumont version kind of j- will tell that one and then we will go into the variations of the Brothers Grimm variant, Summer Garden, Winter Garden, and the Villeneuve version. So uh, this one opens with there was a wealthy merchant, three sons, three daughters, a dead wife no one ever mentions. Uh, His two oldest daughters were vain, proud, rude to everybody. They were going out and partying all the time and they made fun of their little sister Beauty or Belle. We're just going to call her Belle. Yeah, as the French would say. We're going to call her Belle because every movie we're going to watch is going to call her Belle, so. Yeah. Uh, And you don't want to get confused with Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. uh, All the beauties. Uh, So she was the prettiest. She was kind to everyone, even like her annoying suitors and the poor, you know, she was, everyone loved her. And then when her father lost all his wealth, uh, you know, in the stock market crash, they had to... (laughs) They had to move to a country house uh, and the sisters Bo- were like, boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. <laughs> they're drying their tears with their dollar bills. So the, <laughs> the sisters were like, oh, one of those old suitors we rejected will take us. Uh, but no, no one wanted to marry a poor, um, but they, they wouldn't marry a hot poor like Belle, but she didn't want to abandon her dad. Uh, so they moved to the country and the brothers work the fields and Belle does all the housework while her sisters do nothing but complain and they thought she was so stupid to find joy in the simple life with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. (laughs) (laughs) That's what she put on the TV as she was like vacuuming. Uh, She she pulls out a baguette. Ooh, that's hot. (laughs) (laughs) Trademarked. (laughs) So uh, meanwhile, their dad heard of a ship of his that might have returned to port. So he's going to go and like get some, like see if he has money. And he's like, hey, do you want anything in town? And the daughters are like, we want jewels and fancy dresses. And Belle like didn't want to say she didn't want anything. She didn't want to, them to look bad. So she's like a rose. And they're still like, oh my God. Like <laughs> this girl. <laughs> Pick me girl. Uh... <laughs> Pick me a rose girl. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> That should be a t shirt. Uh, <laughs> the so, thing that I thought was so interesting about this story, too, like if I had just tuned into this and was listening to that, I could easily think that we were talking about one of the many versions of Cinderella, like mm. two older sisters, or like in the different versions, there's like six kids or 12 kids, or like they, they kept slimming it down for, uh, you know, each adaptation. Like we'll get some of these, like rid of extraneous kids, but you know, like. The girl that the older sisters or whatever sisters, I guess in the movie, they talk about one of the sisters, I guess is younger than her, but the sisters treat her mean. She has to do all the chores. Uh, the mom is dead. The dad's going on a trip and wants 
to bring them back something. I was like, that is like exactly the beginning of so many of the Cinderella adaptations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it makes a twist. Yeah. I mean, I wonder if when they were, because that's, I think, is specifically very much an element in the literary. I guess she also has two older sisters in Cupid and Psyche. Yeah. 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 And I remember who, where I heard someone was like, you know, I like the idea of like, what if the sisters were legitimately later on in the story, just like concerned for her because she's like living with a monster. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're trying to mess things up instead of they're just like jealous, bitter old hags. Yeah, <laughs> where they're just like, oh, my marriage isn't working out. And so I'm going to try to make sure that like your happiness also doesn't work out. It's like, oh. Yeah, we don't love it. We don't, yeah. <laughs> uh so uh the dad he goes to the town and then he's like oh I don't have like any money like I'm still broke so he's on his way home he gets lost he finds a magic castle and there's food and music and a warm bed and he's like well nobody's here I'm just gonna use it uh and then the morning there's chocolate for breakfast just like Marie Antoinette liked yeah (laughs) You know. Oh, another movie set in France. Sophia, Sophia Coppola. Coppola. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, a fairy is taking care of me. Like, thanks, fairy. Uh, and then he saw the rose when leaving. He's like, oh, perfect. I'll like, grab a rose. And then this beast shows up. This beast that is never fully described. I think there's hissing, there's trunks, there's various things mentioned. Yeah. Uh, the beast, yeah, of all the villainous version in all the five and a half hours they didn't describe the beast yeah they described the furniture but not the beast yeah <laughs> got their priorities in order because like the, all the descriptions are always like oh he hissed he made a loud and terrible sound and i'm like you know what me too though so like, <laughs> i don't understand how this describes like what he looks like yeah and some of the versions talk about like he has he's like kind of scaly which makes seems like kind of reptilian yeah. And even for the movie that we watched, I, one of the few things that I saw on my 13 seconds of looking it up on Wikipedia was that the director wanted it to be uh, deers. He wanted to have a deer's head at first, but then he was like, oh, that's not really going to be that scary though, because a deer is not, you know, a predator. It's like a prey animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it's so it's like, you know, there, there was enough kind of amb- ambiguity that they could have made it into anything, which is one of those things where you see uh, what, like a strong argument for that the Disney movie was an adaptation of this film more than anything because it kind of does like the beast looks like this beast yeah the most like in yes. so many like yeah. ways with like yeah. a bigger torso yeah yeah, even, yeah. very like, wide shoulders very yeah. wide shoulders because <laughs> even like a lot of the art over the years to draw the beast has been like um like sometimes it's just a guy with a, a tail and just like big hairy arms, but that's like it. And then other times it is, looks like a pig. Some And so it it is always a weird variety of something. And the Disney uh, movie definitely, I think decided, okay, this movie, La Bella La Bette, like, this is kind of what we want as our jumping off point mm-hmm. in like beast design. We want like a sexy-ish furry beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's like, like, it's mostly like a very mammal, yeah. um, has a more of a predator, predator face, like a human has a predator face, like not eyes on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, so or like those weird, uh, you know, pupils like goats have that go like across with- Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, like Disney definitely made a choice. Like we want it to be a beast, but we still want them to be like a little bit, you know? That's <laughs> one place that they a did a good bit, job. Yeah. A, little, a little sexy. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> he was scary when he needed to be scary, but you know, like a dog, he could have like those really yeah. cute kind of like innocent sort of looks on his face. And you're like, you know what? I could see it snuggling up to this yeah, in the I could cold pet winter him. of the castle in the middle of France. Yeah. yeah. I could pet him. I could let him drink out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> let him lay across my feet while I sleep. Yeah. Uh, so he, the beast is like, how dare you take one of my roses? Uh, you're going to die now. And then uh, he's like, whoa, uh, yeah, <laughs> escalation, escalation. He's like, well, it's for my daughter. And he's like, sir, he's calling him sir. And he's like, I'm just the beast. Like, don't flatter me. 
yeah and I'll, I'll eat you unless one of your daughters agrees to come in your stead so he's like okay and he goes home and his daughters are like it's because of Belle trying to look better than us than this happened and Belle is like I'll go like I'm scared but I love my dad so they they arrive to this big fancy feast and music and Belle is she's scared but she's brave and she's like he's gonna fatten me up with all this food to eat me uh and then the beast approaches with hissing and the merchant is like I'll stay I'll stay she's like no I'm gonna do this so the beast sends the merchant home with riches. Belle holds herself together until the beast leave. And then she like, that's when she cries and collapses. And again, one of the things I like about the Beaumont version is I do really like this Belle. And you kind of see this characterization stick all the way to like the Disney adaptation. Like it's very rare that you read a, a, a fairy tale and the characterization is so close to how modern adaptations have done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't think I get this in the Villeneuve version. I, I don't think I have the same feelings about Belle, <laughs> her beauty. Um, yeah, so meanwhile, she has like this big fancy room with a large library, a harpsichord, music books. She has a magic mirror that shows her her family. And in her sleep, this fancy lady tells her that she's pleased with Belle's sac- self-sacrificial act and she will be rewarded. So every night they have dinner with the beast and he's like, I'm dumb and ugly, but I have a good heart, except for the time I threatened to kill your dad. <laughs> <laughs> for picking a rose. <laughs> picking a rose. Uh, and she's like, you know, it's better to be good than like fake and cringe. And <laughs> uh, he asked her to marry him every night. And she's like, that's a no from me, babes. Uh, <laughs> and like, so she's living this beautiful palace for three months. Uh, and she starts to see him as a friend, even though he asks her every night, will you marry me? And she's just like, please stop. Like, I just see you as a friend. <laughs> uh, so then she's like, hey, uh, I want to see my father because my sisters are married. My brothers are in the army and my dad's alone. And he's like, OK, you can you can stay a week. Like, uh, but if you stay too long, I will die from grief. Uh, and she's like, OK. Uh, and he's <laughs> He gives her a magic ring to take to Mordor to defeat Dark Lord Sauron. Helen, <laughs> <laughs> well, we finished those movies already. <laughs> we did it. Uh, so she uses the ring. It can teleport her. She teleports home. And her father's wealthy. wealthy. He's happy to see her. The sisters are married and unhappy because the oldest married a hot and rich gentleman who's obsessed with himself. So basically, like, she married an influencer. uh her sister married a guy who is witty but uses that wit to like make fun of his wife so he married she married like a bad stand-up comedian or like one of those youtubers who bothers women on the street oh man yeah so uh but and they're like Belle is rich and happy and they're like you know what let's trick her to stay longer so the beast gets mad and eats her uh we love family uh so (laughs) (laughs) One thing that I thought was really interesting in like this story, like just uh, across the different versions was she transports in the movie, in the movie, she put on like a a A glove glove of his in order to transfer or, you know, teleport. And also uh, in a twist that I thought was interesting, he like gave her, he gave her a golden key. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this is an ultimate act of trust that I'm giving you this golden key, but you can't ever use it on the door that it's for. Only because like those two things, tie into so many other fairy tales like we talked to talk about like it wasn't uh, a skin of an animal necessarily that glove but it was kind of like a piece of his like you know yeah. clothing and in so many of other stories like this there are animals that are or you know these people that have like an animal skin and like putting that on either gives them powers or that's what they right. wear and they're able to shed it at night or whatever the case may be and then also the keys like giving some definite nods to uh blue beard blue beard and because that's not in any of the other as far as that's only in the movie that i've seen it wasn't in any of those other adaptations yeah and so like in the story it's none of those things and it's this like ring and it's like yeah. interesting that in the story we have this like ring as like the tool for magical transportation and it gets cut out of everything yeah that's mm-hmm. never but that prohibition yeah. of like the thing in the castle not to go and that's it makes me think of Cupid and Psyche and then that becomes a staple in Beauty and the Beast with like the West Wing Mm -hmm. it's very Bluebeard so yeah Yeah. we'll talk about that element next next episode (laughs) so 
so the the sisters they rub onions on their eyes so they can like cry and be like stay and oh, she we miss you so much she cries from joy because basically her whole life she just wanted her sisters to not be bitches to her yeah <laughs> like, she's and like she... oh. even if they're not even if they're just pretending and they smell like onions it's like oh girl go no contact with these <laughs> yeah yeah really cut them out of your life uh and, yeah, and in the movie too they're like oh she's so dumb she's not even going to notice that we'll because they say like oh she'll smell the onions and they're like she's so dumb she's not even going to notice we just and unfortunately they were french right. onion soup yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, the ready built excuse <laughs> <laughs> but over there they just call it onion soup yeah right makes sense <laughs> just, soup I, de onion uh <laughs> and so, so she stays too long she has a vision of the beast dying so she wakes up and she starts, she bursts into tears and she says, am I not very wicked to act so unkindly to Beast that has studied so much to please me in everything? It is his, is it his fault he is so ugly and has so little sense? He is kind and good and that is sufficient. Why did I refuse to marry him? I should be happier with the monster than my sisters are with their husbands. It is neither wit nor a fine person in a husband that makes a woman happy, but virtue, sweetness of temper and complacence. And the beast has all these valuable qualifications. It is true. I do not feel the tenderness of affection for him, but I find I have the highest gratitude, esteem, and friendship. I will not make him miserable where I, I will not make him miserable where I to be so ungrateful. I should never forgive myself. So she's like, I'm going to settle. I'm going to settle for beast. Cause he really yeah. likes me. I'm like this like speech. It's there are so many speeches like in this story and things of dialogue that are, aimed at the audience where like they are aimed at like the girls who were being like read and taught like this story and so it's so sad like hearing her like say all of this not because like I don't disagree with her that you should be with somebody that is like kind and caring but you shouldn't just marry somebody that you have like a friendship towards like a yeah. affinity like you should love that person. Like, it's cool to have friends who are friends. It's cool. But the message very much was like, hey, ladies, if your dad wants you to marry somebody who is just kind, then be happy because you lucked out because you could be married to somebody who's hot and terrible like her sister or rich and terrible like her sisters could be married to an influencer or a comedian and those <laughs> yeah. are the two Which worst types horrible. of people to live <laughs> <laughs> two terrible choices and so yeah like this whole that speech it's just so sad of like oh you know what i should just settle yeah, yeah. it like starts off you're like yeah yeah and then she ends with i don't really have feelings for him and you're like that's not how people think of beauty and the beast now they think she fell yeah. in love with him yeah despite but this is like I don't really love you but like I like you yeah. yeah I like you enough to hang out with you more forever yeah. I guess well and like oh I like you enough that I don't want you to die and it's like okay but he didn't it's not magic that's gonna make him die it's he has decided I'm not going to eat I'm just gonna let myself die and that is a manipulation tactic that is so toxic. It's so yeah. bad. Like and it, everyone in this story is using it too, though. It yeah. wasn't exactly. just the beast. It was like the dad was like, "Oh, I'd be so sad. I would die if I never saw my kids again." And then Beauty's no, like, "I would be yeah. so de- sad if you went and died instead of me." Which I guess she was kind of just using that on herself in that instance. Yeah. But also, she did it to the beast and was like, "Oh, I'll getting so sad. I'm going to die if I don't get to see my family again." And it's mm-hmm. like, man, every that is a really toxic uh, tactic yeah. that you all yeah. are using on one another. <laughs> like, you cannot threaten self harm if somebody does not love you. Like that. Yeah that's not your responsibility as like the other person all you can do is tell that person to seek help like (laughs) I think the other crazy thing about the speech is that she's like I was so ungrateful for just like how nice he was to me when he like when he kidnapped kidnapped her yeah I'm ungrateful you know it's that's that's pretty crazy there's lots of complicated elements to this story. Yes. yes. Uh, and at least in the Beaumont version, it doesn't explain why he's dying. The Villeneuve mm-hmm. version gets into the fact that he uh, is starving himself and he's doing it because the fairy, there's this fairy and her magic like won't let him kill himself, but the loophole is he can starve himself to death. 
Mm. And I'm like, hate that. Uh, (laughs) So uh, she gets back. She waits for Beast at dinner and he doesn't show. So she goes searching for him. She finds him dying and she's like, don't leave. Uh, I love you. I want you to be my (laughs) husband. I can't bear the thought of losing you. And then he, boom, hot prince. Uh, Which, that was a choice she made and thank God. Uh, So, uh, (laughs) He turns out, he's like, yeah, I was cursed by this evil fairy to be dumb and ugly unless a beautiful virgin uh, loved him. (laughs) 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 Uh, Now they can rule this kingdom together and this, uh, they walk in, the good fairy is there and she summons Belle's family for the wedding and she says, she's the fairy from the dream and she's like, beauty, come and receive the reward of your judicious choice. You have preferred virtue before either wit or beauty and deserve to find a person a person in whom all these qualifications are united a total package you are (laughs) you're gonna be a great queen i hope the throne will not lessen your virtue or make you forget yourself as to you ladies and she turns to the sisters i know your hearts and all the malice they contain become two statues but under this transformation you will still retain your reason so you shall stand before your sister's palace gates and it will be your punishment to behold her happiness. And it will not be in your power to return to your former state until you own your fault. But I'm very much afraid that you will always remain statues. Pride, anger, gluttony, and idleness are sometimes conquered. But the conversion of a malicious and envious mind is a kind of miracle. So. Yeah, that is like, a serious roast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, that. that is another like speech that's like, okay wow burn where it's in just case like... you're wondering what the purpose of this story was it was to teach you to be like one of these young women <laughs> yeah. and not like the others and here are all the reasons listed and delineated for you as to why and what qualities you should and should not be emulating it's, it's basically a bullet list yeah. <laughs> she, kind of, she kind of like undermines like her own position because she's saying like oh you need to change and be better but i doubt you will because it's like impossible to change and be yeah, a better she person <laughs> awful <laughs> And yeah. so it's like, I'm imagining like, you know, the kids who are like hearing like this story and it's like, oh, you should like, change oh. me better, even though it's going to be really hard for you to be better because. Well, uh, only if only the malicious heart part is. But if you're a kid with a malicious heart, you're like, oh, well, I might not, <laughs> might as well not even try now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. going to go be idle. The thing, that <laughs> I loved, the thing that I loved about this ending, like in relation to the movie was like they get turned into statues that are like sentient still and watching. And then it's like in the movie, you can see how they grab that element, which they didn't, like the movie didn't end with the sisters getting turned into statues, but you go to this palace and there are like these sentient statues looking back and forth awkwardly uh, between Belle and uh, you know the beast while they're talking or whatever. And even those like arms, which is I was so fascinating to be like, oh, like you've got these, this element of like, oh, people being statues that are alive. Let's take that, but repurpose it in a different way. And That's then true. that goes on and becomes sort of like, combined with some other elements, like why there are inanimate objects that are alive and like, uh, you know, somewhat like personified in the yeah. Disney movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, it, let's talk about the movie first before <laughs> like we've, we're we spoiling we're, the whole movie. That's, that's but- what we do here. <laughs> oh, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. Yeah. Spoiler. Uh, I mean, I. Spoilers for a movie that came out in the 1940s. 40s. Yeah. Came out in the 90s. <laughs> spoilers for a 2010s movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so the Beauty and the Prince, formerly known as the Beast, go to the kingdom. They live happily. It's formerly known as the artist, formerly known as the Beast. (laughs) Yes, Uh, but it is that would be awkward. Like I imagine being Belle. Like yeah, my sisters are really mean to me, but now I have to like walk by them every day as they're like watching me like pissed. Yeah, I'd rather just be like, can you just like just they can live back home with their shitty husbands like yeah no especially because like she has a good kind heart so she probably doesn't want to purposely make her sisters feel bad like yes we the audience might want them to feel bad like we want them to be tortured because like they're awful people but like Belle as a person wouldn't have wanted that no so yeah. yeah no you're completely right that it's like um, can they actually be somewhere else? I don't yeah, she'd be like, I don't want this part as part of my decor. It doesn't really go with my vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and over here is where I keep my uh, entrapped <laughs> sister. <laughs> I decorate, I put lights on them at Christmas. 
spooky <laughs> webs for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the Brothers Grimm had a version called Summer Garden and Winter Garden that was put in their collection early on, but it was there like, this is obviously the, a French story. It's too French. Yeah. It was cut. Uh, yeah. And it is very, very short. So there's just a few slight differences other than the fact that it's very short. And this one, there's only three daughters, no sons, and they're all nice. No evil sisters. Uh, the Beast has a palace that is half in summer, half in winter, all year round. Uh, but this crazy twist, Belle does not go willingly. The beast breaks into their house and drags her kicking and screaming <laughs> to the castle. Yeah. <laughs> that's not very French. No, and like another thing that's weird about it is that in the story, it's like the girls, the sisters ask their dad for like a dress and the other one asks for shoes. And then even though it is the middle of winter, she asks for a rose, which is a very selfish thing to ask for or like an impossible task that she was asking from her dad where in the story that you just retold it was summer when he left and so there would have been roses for him to get and bring back mm. um except that it had taken him so long that by the time he was coming back it was like winter and so it's weird because in the like brothers Grimm story it's almost as if like bell is the bad sister and she's mm. getting punished by driving dragged away by yeah. Krumpus's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she goes home, and when she when she goes home, the dad dies, and so she stays longer because her and her sisters are like mo- in mourning together. Like they're not trying to like trick her; they're just like sad because the, their dad died. Uh, and so she returns. This is wild. She finds the beast under a pile of cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. he's a cabbage patch baby <laughs> yeah and uh she pours water on him and then he becomes a prince <laughs> hmm. yeah so uh, wild like Halushki. why didn't they add that into the movie <laughs> where are the cabbages yeah like dig through the cabbages and then just like dump water like on him to wake him up like so romantic and yeah, it's interesting because it was in um, it was in like the 1812 version of uh, the Kinder und House Marchen, or however it said, <laughs> uh, that the Brothers Grimm collected. And they yeah decided that they were going to take that one out and then replace it with like a variant on the story. The which, lilting, leaping lark, I think. Yeah, or we'll the singing, springing later. lark. Yeah. If, yeah. And so it's so interesting because like, yeah, it's like it was in that one first copy, and then they were like, eh, "No, th- no, <laughs> not not this one. Too French. We're gonna take a like a totally different one." And yeah, it's it's such a weird. It's a very weird version, version. and I I in my memory the one with the lark is better, but it's been a minute. But so I'm like, I think I get the choice there. I think they're like. Do we really need like a really awkward version of a story everybody already knows anyway? Yeah. Because uh, that's what like when they had their collection and they were trying to take out ones that were variants that were too repeated, like where they were like, oh, or they were combining like ones together. And so there was some decision making on their part of what was, what is a folk tale and what wasn't got a good enough folk tale. And so it's really interesting because it's like, at what point does this become a literary tale at what point? Yeah. And so this one is an interesting one in their collection because it is very much their decision on how they wanted this story in there. And it's very much obviously like the Beaumont version just became a oral version that's this story as opposed yeah. to like I doubt that story was like circulating 1400s Germany in that form. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now, oh gosh, this this was harder to do to summarize than uh, the history of Middle Earth. Uh, <laughs> wow. So not saying so. OG Beauty and the Beast, French novelist Gabrielle Suzanne Barbeau de Villeneuve. Whenever I say her name, I think of Jane Gloriana Villeneuve, <laughs> the Virgin, <laughs> uh, published in 1740. So imagine if everything slightly icky in this story was raised to 5,000 and it was longer <laughs> than Lord of the Rings, 
And the only audio version you could find was read in the driest tone by someone whose other content seems pretty problematic. Oh. And if Belle was an Amer- annoying Mary Sue pick me of a Wattpad fanfic, mm. and yeah. uh, Beast was a whiny incel who essentially wore this girl down into sleeping with him. Uh-huh. And that was followed by two and a half hours of retroactive world building, fairy lore, backstories, and classism. That's this version. Yeah. So what yeah. you're saying is you liked it. <laughs> yeah. The best thing. The best story. I was like, I can't get enough. I can't wait to re-listen to it on my drive to and from work for the next three weeks. Because it took so long. And I was in the middle of listening to this other podcast that I was very much enjoying. And I had to stop and like try and get through this one. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's time to turn off something enjoyable and listen to something <laughs> awful and problematic. <laughs> Super. Let me keep driving. So in this one, Belle is one of 12. She doesn't really like to read as much in this one. She likes to dance, to make music and be perfect and please the men in her life. Yeah. Uh, I get why her sisters hate her in this yeah. one a little more. And her like, I don't, I find her relationship to her father problematic. Like just because it very much is, um, you see on, well, I, I don't know about everybody. I mean, these are my TikTok algorithms. Um, <laughs> but people talking about um, like emotional incest with um. like parents and their children, usually it's like talking about moms who are obsessed with their sons that are like, boy I'm moms. a mom of a boy. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Um, boy moms and like the grossness. And in this story, I very much felt that about like Belle and her dad when she was just like, I'll do anything for you, daddy. I, I'm like, oh, yeah. honey. And I don't want to live. Life wouldn't mean anything without you, daddy. I'm like, please stop saying daddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it also, it makes me think of like Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, like yeah. in the Bible, you know, mm. that's what they say, call it in the Bible for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But where like, you're yeah. like, you're like, I know, oh, even like the 12 uh, brothers. The, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, with Joseph and the Technicolor Dream Coat, it's funny because like these people are supposed to be the hero. And as a normal person, <laughs> you're looking at them being like, <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I would have hated you too. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's kind of fun looking back on it that way, though. Like, to yeah, I don't know. There's other stories that that has happened with too. Like some of the Cinderella adaptations, like the Jean Baptiste Basile one, <laughs> so, so, where it's like it starts off with her like murdering her stepmom, and you're like, this is the protagonist of this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of down with it, but like messed up, lady. <laughs> yeah, no, especially like because usually in the other like like if I think of like Brothers Grimm or Charles Perot Cinderella like you you root for her because like they are being awful to her and in the Beaumont yeah. version like Bells comes across as pretty likable and they're being awful to her and this one yeah. it's like it's giving this very perfect in an annoying way it makes me think I had to read in college Pamela by Richardson is this like epistolary novel is one of the first novels and it had like a shit ton of merch like there was a dish line and everything, but it was about this girl. It was like Cinderella Merch. if she was like marrying like a rapist. Uh, it was like this, her boss was like trying to force himself on her. And then like she through all these shenanigans, she ends up winning him over and they get married and he has the perfect life, whatever. But it was like, she was like, so like, I'm just like good and pure daddy, like writing letters to her dad. And it was like, oh my gosh, I hate this chick. <laughs> like, yeah, like, even though the things are happening to you, I like, that's bad, but like, you are really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> And that's yeah, this that's this bell. Also, we get an age for her. Ugh, I hate when that happens in a story. Because <laughs> it's, it's never appropriate. <laughs> it's never good. Yeah, because <laughs> she's 16 and the beast is definitely older given the timeline. And I'm like, if they're both 16, that's I'm like, yeah. okay, whatever. You know, it's yeah. olden days. But mm. also in this one, whenever the beast is giving out riches, we discuss how to most economically use and store them. So if you ever wanted <laughs> Belle to talk about <laughs> NFTs or crypto, <laughs> this is the tale for you. <laughs> Finance bro Bell. <laughs> Finance bro Bell. Another reason you would hate her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh God, she's talking about NFTs again. Uh, there, <laughs> there's statues everywhere, like of like frozen people. It's giving white witch. Uh, <laughs> And the beast is really constantly whining about how ugly he is. And he only says like 
five different things to her and their dinners and Bell yeah. dreads these dinners because they're so boring because he doesn't know anything about NFTs no yeah <laughs> uh, and then but- the author keeps making you also sit through those dinners Mm-hmm. And you're as bored as well. <laughs> you can't be like, and the dinners went on like that every day for three months. It's like, no, we have to give you all 90 days of these dinners. And it, at least in like the Beaumont version, I feel like it's slightly implied that they like are getting to know each other a little bit over these right. dinners. But yeah. this one makes it very clear that it is awful and boring. Yeah, except that like the, the super weird thing that's happening is that like when she goes to bed at night and sleeps, they meet up her and the prince in his like human form and they're getting to know each other too at like the same time and which is weird and she's in love with him and they're having sexy talk because it says they're having talk in it not prohibited by like the mores of society or something or and so yeah and he's making her also play these like weird games and tests like, who do you like more? We are the beast. And it's very much like, would you still love me if I was a worm? Like that. Kind of- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which there's only one correct answer to that. And we're not going to tell is- you. <laughs> <laughs> that- Comment below with what you think. <laughs> uh, that was one of the elements that Katrina brought up when, when we were doing an episode of it. And I still have to this day not read that novel. And I'm not going to based on your glowing recommendation. No. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, but that was one of the, it's like it's one of the stories where it's one of the few times that I feel like we kind of actually besides the Disney movie because they did a good job making people fall in yeah. love because that's kind of their thing but like it was one of the few times where he's like oh I actually get how they're getting to know each other yeah like mm-hmm. in the other stories it kind of was like and they became friends and got to know each other because of them spending time but you don't like see anything happening that really would explain it and again at least based on Katrina's probably very generous explanation of it to me it seemed like, oh, it's at least they are actually getting to know each other in some way. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then there's a reason, like, oh, and because of that, even if it's like cringy and weird and like him asking gross, annoying questions, which is like, you know, what that happens when you are in love. Yeah. You do stupid things and ask stupid questions and get really insecure and talk about how ugly you are. At least that was my experience. <laughs> uh, no, we all do it sometimes. No, you're alone. You're alone. <laughs> you're alone like a beast in a castle. <laughs> I mean, and what's interesting too, I know you're going to do like other uh, episodes where you touch on like Cupid and Psyche and some of the like older versions of like how this like morphed. Um, But this is one of the, in those old stories, the, whenever they have to have like an animal bridegroom situation at night is the only time when they the woman and the man actually have a conversation with each other or when the person can like shed their animal skin and be themselves. And so this in a way is that version of that. But then when it gets taken away outside of like this novel, when that part gets taken out, you then are like, wait, I don't understand how these people are getting to know each other. I don't know how she's like falling in love. And it's like, yeah, because it was those nighttime chit chats. Yeah. That like every other version of it. this story, they get to know each other in the nighttime pillow talk. But that was yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this, uh, <laughs> it, this, this, it's also confusing though, because it's like, it's very much she sees them as two separate people. In the, yeah, yeah in the, the novel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's because, yeah, because she has so no she way of know. knowing that. The, the dream person that, that she's talking to because why would she but the the prince keeps saying like don't be deceived by appearances and she keeps seeing the beautiful lady who's like don't be deceived by appearances in her dreams and then she sees a picture of the prince and like a miniature like a little bracelet that she wears so if it was just the dreams i'd be like yeah but like she's starting to pick up these clues and i'm kind of like yeah the bell I know would have put this together. Yeah, you know? so she's like, smart and this is not this is not the bell you know. <laughs> not my bell. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. not my bell. Like yeah. I thought, I thought this lady read books. I thought this lady was intelligent, but she's just not picking up on any of this. Fairy she's like, stuff. huh? That's weird. There's a painting. There's a portrait of the guy in my dreams. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> weird weird or maybe she's just so smart that she's like oh that's where i'm picking up on it like subconsciously Ooh. i saw this and i created like, this image in my around. dream 
That's why it's not, it's all not real. She's it's actually all very in my mind. studied in psychology. Yeah. Yes. I don't yeah. think the rest of the book really supports that though, based <laughs> on what I've heard yeah. so far. It's, yeah, seriously. Yeah. So yeah, most of it is just hours of her exploring the castle and the gardens. There are these spirits called genii and there's songbirds and monkeys and parrots and they do little shows for her. And there's also a room of mirrors where she can see herself and there's a room where she can watch any opera, play or comedy as well as like world events, the festival of St. Germain, the, yeah. tu- the Tuileries Palace, the hottest club in Paris, which would eventually <laughs> become a prison for Marie Antoinette and her family in between Versailles and being deposed and executed. Uh, from the famous movie. From the, the famous Marie- Sofia Coppola movie. <laughs> a movie, yes. <laughs> yeah. That one isn't in, they don't get to Tuileries and Sofia Coppola. No, they but do not. There's an older one. There is a black and white one, I think mm-hmm. from the 40s, where they do they do show us that portion of her life. Mm. very slimmed down because it's complicated all right and then uh, yeah, she keeps dreaming the hot prince and everything when she goes home she spends like three months and all her sister's boyfriends fall in love with her and she's like no like marry my sister this is so <laughs> awkward and they're like no we're obsessed with you and her sisters are like they this in this version i'm pretty sure the sisters like want her to leave because they're like you're ruining everything and the brothers yeah. are and the suitors are like oh stay and the dad's like, you should marry the beast. And she's like, oh, he's so ugly and boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, when she does come home, she like is waiting like a whole day for the beast. And then she goes to find him. And when he's dying, it's because he willingly starved himself to death. Like there's no ambiguity. He's doing this to himself. Uh, and then she weeps. It's like, oh my gosh, I love you. Don't die. You're so sexy. Don't die. Uh, mm-hmm. And he, he gets up and then they go to dinner and he asks her to marry him. And she says, yes. Then fireworks go off for three hours, including like we get descriptions of the fireworks and all this. Uh, Then she goes to bed. There's still a beast. He's still a beast. She goes to bed. (laughs) And then she wakes up and on the, in her dream, the hot lover is like, oh yeah, good for you. And she's like, aren't you like mad at me? And then uh, she wakes up and the hot guy is on her couch. Uh, And then uh, she can't wake him up. So she like does a little show with the parrots. I would have loved to see that musical number in the Disney version, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> with like they're all Iago, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Iago, uh, yeah. Uh, and then he doesn't wake up until a queen and a fairy arrive. So this is when it gets so fucking messy. <laughs> okay, so she does Buckle the thing up. that she's supposed to do, and it's not over. <laughs> it's not over. Two and a half hours left. All right. The- <laughs> The queen is his mom and she's mad that Belle isn't royalty and she won't approve of the marriage. And it's like, Um, can't we reward you? See, you'd think this is going to a subplot, but it really isn't. Uh, Oh. We could, we are not so lucky. Uh, So she's like, you could just like marry a duke and like be around, but like, you can't marry my son. And the fairy's like, you're so shallow. This is actually Belle, my niece. She's also your niece. Yep. They're cousins. Incest baby. (laughs) Incest baby. You don't like that. (laughs) You felt like you wanted incest in this. If you felt like you wanted papal (laughs) approval for the marriage, you know, can Catherine of Aragon marry whoever? (laughs) You gotta. And when you think about the audience that this was for, which was those like salons, like all of these like rich people sitting around, it made total sense to them. They're like, oh, of only course. cousins. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're like, they're like, <laughs> oh, only they're cousins. cousins. Thank, Thank goodness. goodness they were. Yeah. We thought this would have been weird. And he'd make that like this prince would end up marrying what some merchant's daughter. <laughs> that would be weird. Thank goodness they're cousins. They're cousins. Yeah. That's uh they keep it in the family. Yeah, uh, <laughs> keeping those genes, the hemophilia genes in the family. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, Jane Austen did say a cousin marriage was ideal. Mm-hmm. She marries at yeah, Mansfield Park and maybe another one. She does marry her cousin, the heroine. Uh, yeah, so the queen and fairy go for a walk. Time for the prince's backstory. His dad died when he was young. So the queen relied on this old fairy with a bad reputation, like Taylor Swift in 2017. <laughs> and uh, the queen is at war for like 15 years with this evil qu- king, long drawn out political drama where the queen, I feel like is being ashamed for being a woman leader, like in the subtext. Uh, Cause she's like too proud. And I'm like, 
Well, she did like conquer his whole country. So like <laughs> she could be proud of that, I would say. Yeah, like maybe she can feel good about herself for a second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the old fairy is raising the prince, but really like grooming him. Uh, she wants to marry him and he doesn't want to because she's old and decrepit and she wasn't even hot when she was younger. She's <laughs> always been ugly. <laughs> Oh, and he's damn. he's like 16 at the time too so i mean it is valid that he doesn't want to marry an old lady yeah uh, i just want to say that this like absolutely uh rewrites the beginning of the disney's version <laughs> when you realize that like that boy that's like 10 years old or whatever in in like the disney version at the beginning that old lady who comes to him it's it's this situation <laughs> And yeah. it's like, oh, that's yikes! Not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't the like very it. Least. <laughs> not even his cousin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he's like, "Let's go ask my mom." Like, and so they go to the war front, and then you know he inspires everyone because he's this hot young man, and he's a leader, and he's instantly good at battle. Uh, And he like cleans the floor with them. And the old ass Ugo fairy is like, (laughs) I'm going to marry your underage son. And the queen is like, that's inappropriate. Also, men who marry fairies are never happy because they're trophy husbands to like powerful girl bosses. And that's, that's not good for them. And everyone knows that that's bad. (laughs) That imbalance. Uh, So the fairy is like, this is because I'm ugly, isn't it? So she looks in the mirror. They're all looking in the mirror and she curses the prince to be ugly and dumb. Unless a woman woman willingly comes to him thinking she will die and then later marries him. So she lays out the curse and then later the other fairy so is the like, curse, she, she has to think that, that he is going to die, that she's going to die. He's going to die. She has to go thinking the beast is going to eat her and then marry him. And then it describes the fairy, this good fairy doing research about the curse. I'm like, she spelled Google it out. Search. <laughs> Google fairy search. Fairy tale Google search. She's in Gondor, yeah. I love how this curse also is like from prey to wedding day. Like that's the journey that she has to <laughs> New show on TLC. <laughs> oh, right after Milf that. Manor. I isn't that, that isn't that Twilight? Oh. There's some oh. this this movie gave me some Twilight vibes. <laughs> Truly. Yes. Yeah. 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 I've never read or seen Same. the movies of Twilight. I'm so like, I saw the last well, movie. Well, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. That's why I feel. I feel like by the time, by the time I read it, uh, by the because I feel like what it's inevitable and for it to happen. <laughs> it happens to us all. Yeah, but I will have already known everything about it before. I'm sure it's going to be yeah. assigned reading in one of your graduate classes. At Probably. Some yeah. For vampire class. Yeah. Yes uh so my a, very important vampire class, very important vampire class. well you got to fight vampires i i'm sure that's part of what you're studying yeah i had a friend in grad school with a theology <laughs> major and i'm like i'm assuming you're studying how to fight demons so then one day you can become the pope right and she's like not really and i'm like i'm still gonna that's what you do that's what you're doing. yeah i'm like yeah. but you probably should i mean king solomon <laughs> had to learn how to fight uh vampire demons exactly uh <laughs> so uh Good fairy comes to help. Yes, this whole plot is revealed to be orchestrated by fairies and their weird politics. So this proto fantasy, which is funny because now in the modern cultural concept, there's like no fairies in Beauty and the Beast, except maybe an enchantress. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They brothers grimmed it. Uh, So uh, she uh, takes the prince to this palace. It was his dad's whole hunting lodge and the mom improved it, which is actually what happened with Versailles weird uh Fun fact. yeah that's why my back background is the hall of mirrors also for Belle's hall of mirrors that in this version aren't magical she can just look at herself uh, <laughs> they're just mirrors <laughs> yeah so bell now it's time for Belle's backstory uh we i feel like when people want to expand beauty and the beast they're like we need more backstory we need them to r- decide that her mom died of the plague the thing that everyone died of you know like they can't yeah. just we we could have assumed childbirth was hard uh, yeah still is. like <laughs> like brain aneurysms they happen to like <laughs> yeah uh so bell's dad is arriving at the castle he's this dilf he's called the king of the fortunate island and he married a shepherdess because in his land you're allowed to marry for love uh his wife died and so did his daughter plot twist they didn't his wife 
was a fairy, the current fairy in the story's sister. We don't get names, which I love for all these characters. Uh, <laughs> well, they're women, so why Makes would they need names? They yeah, they don't need names. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so fairies have these rules where they like can't stay in one place or marry humans because of the power differential or the cause of imbalance, which some of these fairy politics are actually like could be yeah. interesting if they were put in like a, a story. An that... actual story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not just like, here it is, like briefly explain his backstory, but you don't actually really need to know that. Yeah. yeah I think it happens like, explore in that interesting season idea, four of True Blood. I'm currently on season three <laughs> on a rewatch because spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't watched it, Sookie's a fairy. She's part fae. So, yeah. fun uh, fact. Like Belle, as we're about to find out. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, so he married, so, but she did anyway because this king was so hot and nice and she doesn't care that she's been more powerful than him. So meanwhile, the I think it gets confusing because I hate it, but the and I didn't want to pay attention, but I was trying. The old ugly fairy from earlier gets them to open the great big book of fairies. Shout out to the great big book of everything from the TV show Stanley on Disney Channel. But uh, mm. they <laughs> they open the book and you can see where all the fairies, everything fairies have done over the past like hundred years or something. And they are like, oh, she broke the rule. She keeps blessing the same people. So there's a problem here. And so the fairies are like king shaming her for marrying a mortal, degrading, <laughs> degrading is the word that this guy kept using. And I was like, I don't like this. Uh, and uh, I'm confused because I thought the mother, all, mother of all seasons was a separate fairy, but she might be the old ugly fairy who I started calling uglicent. Uh, <laughs> Instead of maleficent? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ugly, <laughs> yeah uh, so they're like she's like please 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 and they're the mother of all seasons is like get fucked and she's like also <laughs> Belle's gonna marry a monster lol and they throw <laughs> her in air prison uh and the sister has to pretend that like oh my gosh I hate my sister but she's like I gotta help her uh so meanwhile ugly scent or maybe the mother of all seasons she kidnapped this she's like I want to get with this hot king right so she kidnapped this ugly young princess who is fleeing her enemies and she's sleeping beauty to her she like put her to sleep and then cloned herself as this woman and uh she's like <laughs> yeah cloning clonings and beauty and the bees uh, <laughs> so she begs the king of the fortune islands help me with my enemies and uh it's she wanted to like win him over and she's a hypocrite whatever so the king helps her they conquer the kingdom but she's still living with him and she's like doting on Belle. So he's like, I trust you with her education. But then she's trying to get people to say like, oh, you guys should get married. And he's like, no. And then she thinks this is because of the baby. So she hires an evil governess and her husband to kill the baby in the woods. But the good fairy disguises herself as a bear who straight up murders the evil governess and her husband and makes it look like Belle was murdered too and sneaks her off. Oh my gosh, this is getting really complex. <laughs> I know, I'm I like, know. like, what? So <laughs> he thought that his daughter and wife died by bear attack his he thought his wife disappeared and then his daughter died by bear attack wow yeah he's not one of the people dying from grief in this story uh, uh apparently uh, he was like it happens eh, <laughs> i can make more yeah. <laughs> Uh, but the king was so mad, he kicked out Uglicent, uh, as who was still disguised as the ugly queen. And then she went to the sleeping ugly queen and was like, hey, I like helped you get your kingdom back so you can go back and rule it. And then she does and she's fine. So, okay. yeah, I guess she, she, she made it out okay. Uh, but then, but I, I really hate how they keep emphasizing all these women as ugly in a story that's supposed to be about how appearances don't matter. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, because oh. appearance stories about like appearance only matter if it is about women not caring about men's appearance. It mm. doesn't go the other way. Like men are never taught in stories to not care about their wives being like beautiful or ugly. Like it's just expected like that. Oh, of course, I'm a man. I can choose and I'm going to pick a hottie. Mm -hmm. And that there's no moral badness about that. Yeah. Uh, except, you know, there is the, the wife of Bath's tale. But doesn't she get hot at the end yeah. anyway? Yeah. So it's, but in that story, it's the guy does learn a lesson where he says, 
I'm going to let like the woman choose. And it's after that medieval period where like that story appears. Oh, I want to say that there is another one too, where that happens. Um, my brain was like Shrek. Um, and- <laughs> Shrek comes wrong. up like every episode. <laughs> um, the text. <laughs> yeah, the text. Um, but yeah, it's like after the medieval period, like that um, moral like drops away and you like don't get stories where uh men mm. like have to learn that like beauty isn't everything it's fine for men to think that beauty is everything but women aren't allowed to that's uh my mm. my my theory i'm coming up with right now for that is so the renaissance very famously kind of mm. made things a little more sexist because roman culture like greco roman culture was very sexist compared to like celtic germanic like not like they were like matriarchies but like they were like oh yeah like women are people and can like own a house yeah sure mm-hmm. yeah you know? uh <laughs> so like the roman culture was very sexist and so that kind of like like women's education became more controversial then yeah because it was like why are you educating women so maybe that's when they're like we can't tell people it's okay to marry an uggo <laughs> <laughs> yeah like why would a man have to marry an uggo that would be horrible who would Get- do that but get also women need to get over it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> women need to get over it. Like I'm rich. What more do you want? You know, yeah. which we can still see today on like every single sitcom yeah. where it's like the man just looks like a dude. Like he just looks like any normal person. Yeah. And then the wife has to be like a super hottie. He's always like, <laughs> my dumb husband. <laughs> yeah yeah gross yeah, it's, it's, it's the thing is it's like you can't it's like you have to laugh but it's just like it's just so like yeah ingrained. like oh these yeah. are the state of things yeah yeah I mean every Disney movie it's always like some like round man and his dead wife who must have been a smoke show because all their daughters are like yeah <laughs> like they got it from somewhere and it yeah. wasn't him <laughs> all these 16 year olds with no acne yeah yeah uh so okay so the ugly queen rules her kingdom the ugly fairy goes back to grooming the prince soon to be known as the beast and uh, the good fairy ran away with Belle, and she finds a cottage where there's a sick baby and she's like i was gonna heal the baby but conveniently the baby just she had just died she just died when i got there and i'm like you killed that baby i think you killed that baby, <laughs> yeah, <bitch> killed that baby. <laughs> ma'am I'm bit off a little more like a shoe with this one what do i do now uh, and so yeah. she puts Belle in there and then she goes to be raised by the merchant and the fairy disguises herself as a fortune teller to be like, oh, that baby's so special. And so then this baby, this dad seemed to love this baby more than his other babies. And maybe that's why she didn't end up bitter and jealous. Interesting. I don't know. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so she was like, hmm, she still has to marry a monster. She does a search. She's searching all the dating profiles she finds about this beast uh, me- <laughs> she helped turn the everyone in the palace staff into statues people who did nothing wrong i think that's a war crime i know it's not i'm gonna say that's a fairy war crime mm. yeah. yeah yeah it wasn't even a possibility that would have come up in the Ge- geneva convention but if right. if it were they definitely <laughs> would have been like no that's not allowed definitely yeah, not allowed because they're restored she restores them after the curse is broken i'm pretty sure um but still that would suck uh also she used the book to point out that uglicent had debased herself by trying to hook up with the hot king and the hot prince the hot underage boy and they were like okay that's a yikes uh and that was embarrassing <laughs> because she was old and she should know better unlike the beautiful shepherdess fairy so she went to jail air jail so now there's no antagonist in the current timeline uh yeah so uh, the story's over <laughs> uh and everything hap- so <laughs> everything that's happened was arranged by the fairy and the king was like i'm happy to have my daughter but i'm still sad about my wife and then she shows up oh, and damn. she's like hey the fairy queen married a sage which was a very good marriage and is okay but her daughter had to go through this thing where you had to be a serpent which was a way to, a fast track to be a fairy elder but you could die um and this was not in the Winx saga on Netflix so I don't know what they're talking about (laughs) uh so Belle's mom volunteered to do it for the fairy queen's daughter and then herself so then now she's an elder and she's free and so now she's back with the king and he's so happy he becomes as young as his son-in-law uh yeah that's weird uh so (laughs) chaos 
Belle's family and the sister's boyfriend who are still hanging around show up and Belle's dad is like, Belle, my daughter. And the fairy is like, actually, she's not your daughter. Shut the fuck up. Pay her homage. And Belle is like, it's okay. Like, we're still family, you know? Like, he still raised me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's more of a dad to her than this man who created her. That's, yeah. That was his role. Uh, yeah. Then she convinces the suitors to marry her sisters. And they do because they get to be close to Belle. And they all get to work at court. And oh. yeah. Oh, oh that's so oh I was yeah, like that's I don't sister think I like sister. Belle <laughs> no yeah. she's like yeah you guys can all stay here and but you have you can stay here and look at me only if you marry my sisters <laughs> the sisters yes. loved it <laughs> yeah I'm sure yeah be in the like, beast too when the sisters well, murder when they, Belle when they find out that uh they're she's not even like their genetic sister she's like what the hell yeah. yeah they're not even like yeah. actually related you're a no wonder she was so yeah. much better looking than us <laughs> yeah. yeah what happened to her sister the sick one the sick baby yeah uh so justice for that baby <laughs> the real victim here truly and so <laughs> bell and the prince formerly known as beast return to their kingdom traveling by their new super fast chariot pulled by white and gold stags but they don't worry they vac- vacation at the magic palace with the spirits birds and monkeys and they organize to spread the tale across the universe. There's a multiverse in Beauty and the Beast. The <laughs> Wait, they want to spread their sentences. love story? Yes. Or the queen does. The, the, the king's mom or the prince's mom. And then everyone lives super long and happy lives. And that is that nightmare. That oh my oh, gosh. I like I was like reading it. I was like, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna do Beaumont. And we're gonna quickly mention these other variants because they're all kind of the same one. And then they keep adding all this, and I'm like, how am I supposed? we're gonna spend half the episode on this but it's like it's it is so fascinating to think about like the context in which this story was like told where the I'm just imagining like all of that backstory she decided to add it on to like entertain her friends that she was like telling this story to that she's like oh and so we can explain like how like why he turned into a beast in this crazy extrapolated fairy universe. And I'm like, there's a better way to tell this story. You need to include that world building ahead of time Uh or weaved in. This needed to be like a prequel, like not after the climax, then two hours of explanation. Yeah, that's a perfect, it is a prequel, but it just baked into the actual story. Yeah. yeah, right before they get married. Yeah. Like that's where it comes like, okay, well, that's true. she decides that's she's true. gonna marry him. Okay, the story's over. Nope. We nope. gotta do all now that world building I forgot to do. She's got him on the hook. It's like they're gonna get married. And then it's like, but if you want to stick around and see it, you gotta listen to this <laughs> other story I've been workshopping that I'm just now jamming into this universe. Like it's yeah, not that's even the same it, thing. The, she's like, trying to workshop it. Yep. Yeah. 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 And wait, so all of this story was told while the prince was laying down on the sofa, still like asleep? No, he Is wakes right? up. Oh, okay, he, okay. He explains his life to her. Oh, okay. And then the queen and the fairy walk back in and then the dad shows, the king of Happy Island shows up. The king of Happy Island. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then they explain that. And then the wom shows up and then no, again, no one cares what happened to Belle's, uh, the merchant's <laughs> wife. Like, no. <laughs> She's yeah. a poor woman, bottom of the barrel. Uh, yeah. So it's no it, name, no backstory for that. Nothing. Woman. Yeah. It's just so it's it is like a, do you ever play the story game where you're like sitting around a bonfire and like mm. you each add something to the story? Mm-hmm. That's what it this feels like. Like we're all ad living. We're yes anding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like and a couple got... people there are purposefully trying to mess everything up by <laughs> yeah. and the they're most going and, thing possible. And and this. <laughs> And then this, and then this. That, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like Too the much story. Ending. Yeah, like the story should have ended a long time ago, but people just were like, "Oh, please stop." And then and- there's an ugly fairy, <laughs> yeah. and she's kind of a bitch <laughs> because of course. <laughs> and she's the mother of the seasons, and it's also or like, is she? Or is she? Are they two separate <laughs> characters? Can't couldn't tell you. Uh, so the. What I'm gonna, this is my take in our B, 
on our Valentine's Day Beauty and the Beast season. I forgot to say that's why we're doing Beauty and the Beast this time of year. Because this is so romantic. So romantic. Like, we did the same thing. Yeah, we did. It, <laughs> and then it, it just I, took yeah. a year, a year of Valentine's. Yeah. Uh, but I think the worst thing you can do is over explain mm. logistics of this curse, how it came to be and what's mm. happening. I am looking at a certain man named Stephen who wrote a film in 2017. I am looking at things, I'm looking at <laughs> responding to cracked and BuzzFeed articles. Yeah. You know, oh, and it's, it yeah. really, it really overburdens the story uh, because you, yeah. most of it, you're just kind of like, yeah, it's magic. Like this, this, the movie doesn't even really say, or they say his parents didn't believe in spirits and the spirits were like, we'll show you. Don't believe wow. in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't believe in fate. Now fate's going to do whatever it wants. Mm -hmm. So after we survived that. Let's actually get to the movie. I was like, oh, I yeah. can't wait to do a fairy tale movie that's like just like, you know, a nice fairy tale and you read the story or talk, tell the story real quick and then to it. And then it's like, actually, this is as complicated as the history of all of Middle Earth. Yeah. yeah. So what I want to first start with is that I guess any of the three movies, but the fact that those came out of all of that context both the shorter version that long version we just yeah. talked about it reminds me a lot of the snow queen and how disney got to frozen how the small yeah. elements are yeah. there and so that's just uh yeah it's crazy because you really have to find the nuggets in that long story and be like okay what is the good parts yeah which is kind of what beaumont did for yes. everyone she and then, the, then this writer uh who's jean he jean wrote Kirk, it too yeah right? yeah he found the even smaller nuggets and made that yeah wow and and added some stuff that kind of added more i i've got thoughts but um he added more into it to give it more of a like a movie flow like yeah. a story and one thing that disney then is usually very amazing at is ex like giving reasons for their beats beat by beat yeah and um that i was thinking about that as i was watching like this movie that in in this movie la bella la bette they um, there were a lot of beats that didn't totally make sense yep. of how we <laughs> hopped from one place to another. Um, but Disney was good, even though they have to change like a lot, they're good about explaining the emotions behind why people the then take tissue. their choices. Yeah. 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 There no, is connective tissue. That is really the Disney treatment is giving us a, a, even just an emotion for the audience to feel. Because I do feel like yeah. this movie kind of happens and you watch it and you're not bored. <laughs> you're interested. Right. But you're not like, I'm not like, oh, I'm feeling for Belle in this moment. Whereas yeah. I was even just watching clips today because I watched, I rewatched the Lindsay Ellis video about how Beauty and the Beast is in Stockholm Syndrome. Because yeah we'll have to get to that at some point you know uh and like just even like clips like the music and everything and the voice acting you're like oh I just really feel for like these yeah. characters yeah and I, I don't think this movie quite gets there but it's I don't really like them more than in Villeneuve so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh okay so trigger warning for this movie as we get into it there is a very aggressive suitor a uh, very Jewish looking money lender and a man slapping a woman for potentially comedy. It's unclear. <laughs> yeah. And, and also um, a, a beast grabbing a statue's breast. Thank you. That's what yes. I said. He grabbed the bust's bust. Yeah. yeah it was so <laughs> weird. And then I was, was like, like sulking is away. that statue sentient like the yes. other ones? I was yes. like, okay. But she didn't have arms. So she couldn't yes. be like, so like, cause the face, the face was a human face. So I was looking at the human face because it was like, it not, not that it was a statue of a human, but that it, it was an, yeah. an, right. a, an actual physical yes. human face. And so then when his hand like went across as he was dramatically exiting, yes. as his hand went across and then he like grabbed the boob, my brain was like, wait, 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 is that that actress's breast? And then I was like, no, wait, what? What part of her is prop and what part of her is yes. person? What's and man then, and what's Muppet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. 
And so the whole I, thing like, happened so subtly that it was like, I'm was like, did I see what I think I saw? Yeah, I and then it, confirming it. it with like Katrina and you. And it's like, yes, okay. This yes. did happen. It's not something that my yeah, brain created. I had a text Oh yeah. That's, it's just seriously. It was so like, was it an actor? It was one of those sentient statues or was it just a bust? I think it was a bust with a sentient face, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So it was a sentient head. And so I think I'm pretty positive that the rest of her was, yeah, was a, a prop. Yeah. Um, okay. I actually thought the whole I, thing was a problem. This is the first time realizing I realized it was too. maybe a human's face. I there thought were it was some just statues a that were just statues, but there were a, a lot that were faced. Very okay. inconsistent, but also I I get it. Yeah. Money was tight. Union uh union question. Um <laughs> if a char- unions? <laughs> if a character wears something, that is the costuming department. But if a character is like holding something like using something it is a it's that's the props department so mm. i'm wondering uh union question him grabbing her boob is the costume department or props department yes. comment below <laughs> yes <laughs> comment below <laughs> who is in charge of making those are they costumes are they props also that, to throw a wrench in it like it was kind of the set too all of those statues are kind of like department yeah is it art is it well i I mean and the thing is it's obviously supposed to be like he's imagining touching bell's breath yeah 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 Yeah. as he was like walking away this Um, might be the i want i mean i feel weird using this word this might be the sexiest beauty in the beast you know i'm not saying this was personally sexy to me i just felt very sexually (laughs) it's a low bar but it it hopped it I yeah him like drinking out of her hands it's definitely um more innuendo yeah yeah well not even just like innuendo but just like uh the tease of that in the disney versions it's definitely not yeah especially when one is a cgi monstrosity uh the the yeah uh, oh yeah can i quickly talk about that i think this makeup is way better than the cgi version yep i actually think it's better just in, i genuinely yeah. mean that but also as a joke it's well done like the makeup is well done i <laughs> yes. think it looks very strange and weird but also it's sort it's of a point. <laughs> yeah it's yeah like, like considering this is the 40s too it's kind of yeah. like because we've seen a lot of I mean, I guess there was some pretty good like monster makeup and stuff going on. Yeah, you know, no, back around I was, that time, but this was really good. I was like, the, yeah, the like, line where his eyes the, are. It's like, eyes. Yeah, because I was fur staring goes into all it. the way up. Uh huh. Like right to there, and so I was trying to think like, okay, how are they applying that? How are they putting this costume on this man? Uh, and they're like, doing like close-ups up close. of those eyes too, with like the sparkling, yeah, stuff. So it's like their, their eyes are really featured. Like they had to get that right, and they yeah. pulled it off. And yeah. I mean, this, I'm, I feel like this is a conversation that like, like Jim Henson company has been having mm. with people where it's like puppets are better than uh, CGI monsters. Like, especially it, when you underpay your VFX team. Mm. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Marvel. Yeah. And so it is like them having like, what is it called? Practical effects instead of uh, yeah. like CGI effects. If yeah i would agree yeah I've, i haven't seen i didn't see the live action uh beauty of the Don't beast do movie I'm i had watching. to watch it in 20 minute increments over the course of i don't know two months i just i couldn't do it all at once it, it is bad. the villainu version to the beaumont if beaumont is like the disney version where it's like we're gonna <laughs> in add terms of stuff, quality quality stuff that you don't like characters being less likable uh uh, yeah just being a less pleasant experience (laughs) overall overall yeah yeah. uh yeah so there's this movie has has a lot going on but okay so we open with two men shooting arrows almost killing a dog (laughs) yes that poor (laughs) dog opposite of pet the dog moment or save the (laughs) save the cat (laughs) yeah it's like mm, we imperil the dog yeah yeah so, and also they're shooting it into the room where one of this guy's sisters are. Yeah. yeah. And and they're doing it because they're just like, ha, this is going to be fun. No, they had put a target up on the house uh-huh. between the two windows. And I'm like, <laughs> who thought of doing that? Look, You're, if you miss, it goes straight into a window. You have brothers. I do. Oh. You know, they were not thinking. They were just doing it. Yeah. 
Yeah, this but that's something like you I could see give... your brothers doing easily. I, yeah. You don't that give them true. weapons, though. I think that's the key. Is I was yeah. also a also dumb boy. Men. <laughs> yeah, men. these are men. Yeah, they're like probably twenties. Even though I think they both look forty because this is an old movie. <laughs> yeah, so you're like, whoa, how old is? I don't know. It looks like yeah. somebody's grandpa. <laughs> huh. So yeah, these dum dums are Ludovico and his friend Avenant. Uh, so Ludovico has sisters. They're getting shot at. Uh, they're Felicity and Adelaide, and they're petty and mean, and they abuse the youngest sister, Belle. So I think, well, it's like she's the youngest sister, and then later she calls one of them my little the sister. The baby sister, yeah. And then I'm yeah. like, is she the middle then? Middle child thought. syndrome is Which, real. Yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> it is. Coming from uh, the only child in the chat. Uh, yeah. Well, my, my, well, should, my mother is a middle child, and she, she's, a, she's gone through it, you know? um but yeah uh I know as a youngest child I think the reason I <laughs> liked fairy tales was because their favoritism towards <laughs> my type you're like oh I can I can identify with all of these I'm, a, I'm I am the protagonist. I'm beautiful and kind of better Belle. than everyone else <laughs> um but also yes. in many other versions extremely dumb but at least nice to animals so not only do they like abuse her they literally make her be their servant because they don't have servants anymore yeah yeah and they're like you get to do it very cinderella yeah very uh so Belle, our protagonist she is a kind loyal and curious woman who struggles with boundaries and she loves a swoon struggles with yeah. boundaries yeah yeah that's how i describe this woman uh so the sisters go off in these litters carried by their footmen who are drunk and covered in hay. Yeah. <laughs> they complain and that the, nobody wants to work anymore. And the litters were like <laughs> full of animals. That was my favorite. Like the one sister like sits down and then there's still like a duck that like runs yeah, out like, from yeah. under her dress. I was like, one duck. Yeah. Amazing. But I, I don't want us to miss that joke that was uh nobody wants to work anymore. That was brilliant. I loved that joke. Thank you for saying well, that. <laughs> that's that's their five. They're like, nobody yeah, wants absolutely. to work anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Uh so Avenant comes in and is like, Belle, I love you, Mary. I'm gonna take you away from here. You don't even the floor is your mirror. And she's like, <laughs> I mean, I mean that floor is really shiny. <laughs> She's doing shiny. a great job with the she waxing. Only for three hours was waxing that part that of the floor because the rest of the floor was not well, shiny they, at all. They're too poor to have a mirror. <laughs> yeah. This is the mirror section of the floor. Yeah. And, and listen, that... maybe she's just learning how to take care of a house. They're new poor. True. Yeah. That's and true. Instead of nouveau riche, nouveau poor. <laughs> yes, yeah, poor, poor in French. Oh, Okay. Don't be the YouTubers. E R E is that who? Uh, yeah, sometimes French is. I shouldn't say. I'm like, it's just English with a, cra with a crazy accent. With every <laughs> single vowel they can. Or write. are we just Vowels. French with a crazy accent? I mean, actually, that's probably that's, actually, that is actually like, historically <laughs> true. Like historically, we're, we're yeah. like French and German had sex, and that's English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, so yeah, he's like. I could, I'm going to marry you. And she's like, I need to be with my father. And he's like forcing himself on her basically. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, cause he's trying to kiss her. She's literally like mouth, hands on mouth. Like, yeah. no. And yeah. so I read this hot take. I read this as she does not like this man. And then- I did too. Yeah. They throw in a twist at the end. And I was they like- They do. <laughs> and I hated it. Yeah, yeah, I did too. I thought it was a- <laughs> kind of to get into the spoiler i thought it was a all white people look the same kind of moment i was like Me all french too. people in this movie look the same me watching yeah. the crown when i can't tell how the characters <laughs> well because like in a lot of old movies when i'm watching old movies i feel like because every single man and every single woman is the same look because yeah. hollywood oh this wasn't hollywood but like yeah like acting at the time it was like they were casting one type of looking person yeah and so i mean yeah i feel like every black and white movie that i watch uh, from it's like hard. the 1940s yeah. i'm like yep. oh this is supposed to be a character but i can't remember which character it's supposed to be so yeah at the end i was like oh my gosh that guy looks so much like <laughs> And you don't yeah. have like extra context of like slightly different hair color or like even the costumes like yeah they're all wearing gray <laughs> their hair is all they're gray. all gray. unless it's very different you know it's like color very was not lighter. invented yeah. yeah 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 he you need a mustache or a mole or 
something for me something to distinguish yeah 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 again is before color invented it was before the gays invented the rainbow yes. <laughs> yep. yeah. exactly. exactly that's that's historical okay so uh the she her because her brother comes in and she runs behind him and he's like i'm a scoundrel but i don't want my sister marrying one <laughs> yeah and Rich. uh he's a winner truly mm. Uh, Belle's dad comes home with all these people and they're talking about they're struggling with debt but they found this ship so they're gonna go get cargo and they're so they might be rich and Ludovico is like that's why I've not wanted to marry Belle and she's like he even wanted to when we were poor like don't give him that much credit Uh, and the sisters were turned away from the duchess's party and they heard people but they were not allowed in bouncer said no yeah yeah there's no party tonight yeah, I yeah. literally can hear the parties. There's no for party. you. There is no party for you. There yeah. is no party. If you ain't got no money, take your broke ass. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> home, yeah. So that was what the Duchess said. Yes, yep. the Duchess, Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the dad goes off to get like the goods and the sisters ask for various pets that are illegal in California. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, a parrot. And, and a monkey. 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 So yeah. I think you can have a parrot. You can have birds, but monkey's gonna rip your face off. I'm sorry. Yeah, they are. I saw nope. Uh yep, me too. Spoiler for nope. <laughs> Spoiler for nope. Uh it's in the first, it's in the opening scene. So exactly. <laughs> uh so Belle asks for a rose because they don't grow in that particular area. So okay, we're getting back to not being annoying. They laugh at her. Yeah, they're like <laughs> basic. Dummy. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Like the, she wants flowers. It's gonna die. My monkey's gonna live forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the brother is in debt with a very Jewish coded money lender. And the reason this is a problematic and old trope is in medieval Europe, Jews were the money lender money lenders because in Catholicism, charging interest was a sin. It's funny how that changed, but not the gay stuff, but okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> funny how certain things change, but uh, so anyways, the evil Jewish moneylender uh, is an anti-Semitic trope. It appears in European literature, white European yeah. literature a lot, you know, yeah. think of like Ivanhoe, Merchant of Venice, you know, it's, a, mm-hmm. it's an old yeah. trope that didn't yeah. need to be there, as Katrina pointed out. It was yeah. not in the story. Yeah, that it, it wasn't in the original story that she was, uh, that this is like based off of the, this character of like yeah, a they don't, lender. They don't have uh, creditors coming after them. No. Yeah, that wasn't a thing that was yeah. like happened in the story. Yeah. And so they put this guy in the story. It almost seemed like just and right to, after World War II. Yeah. You know? Yeah, not feels like a room. bad time read not that the there's room. a good time, but feels like a really bad time. <laughs> An especially yeah. bad time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so gross, but it did inspire me to tell the U.S. government I can't pay interest on my student loans because of my religion. So mm, nice. thanks. Yeah, <laughs> that out. work out for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll report back with how that goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the dad finds out that uh, the debtors, his other debtors, took all the stuff that was found. He can't even afford to stay at the inn. And he has to go in the dark wood. And again, the guy's like, get wrecked. Like, whatever, you're poor. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, uh, doesn't he? He. They're like, well, then why don't you just ride home? He's like, it's dark and night out. And he's like, you came here in the dark. And he's like, it you was the moon. Yeah, yeah, he was like, yeah. oh, there was a moon up then. There's not a moon up now. Which, as somebody who goes out, and t- I like how I started that with witch. Um, <laughs> which, as someone who, as Whoa. someone who goes out into the desert under full moons and new moons, uh, right. there is absolute, the, the moon is so bright. Right. Um, but th- it doesn't matter if you're going through a forest, because once you're in a forest, that like light actually disappears anyway. So yeah, I'm saying I understand his point uh, with the moon, but also no. <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna go under trees and in the forest and it was going the, the light from the moon gets blocked out anyway yeah. so he was wrong either way yeah wrong uh so he <laughs> he finds this spooky castle and it's giving 
It's giving theme park Halloween, man. <laughs> giving not scary fun. And you know, I mean that in the best way. Like this would be a great maze. Like I'd be like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is so fun. Like the creepy statue. Actually, I very yeah. much hate those mazes because you know my husband loves them. And I walk in, and my first thought is, how can I be experiencing life outside of this maze? Like, how soon <laughs> yeah. can I not be inside this? Well, you gotta solve it to get out. So. Yeah, no, I'm very. I'm very anti being in uh, like corn mazes. Um, I didn't know that those were like a thing until I moved uh, to the United States, like as an adult. And I uh, was like, oh, I don't like this. This is creepy. I never want to be lost in corn. See, <laughs> I, I can deal with a corn maze because no one's actively <laughs> trying to frighten me, but I'm from the Midwest, you know, I'm from <laughs> the land of corn. We trust, <laughs> as Midwesterners, we trust the corn. Yeah. <laughs> We trust you could even say we're, we're children. Children of the corn. <laughs> you could say you that. You could say. We Hail, were born into it. <laughs> Hail Mother Demeter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's uh, the, but I was not born to people dressed as clowns. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that yeah. will, in a maze, like. Or mm. into like hallways full of like human beings or hands holding candelabra. Like, yeah that's yeah. creepy what what always gets me in mazes again a tan but a tangent <laughs> but like what gets me is like they'll have like the props of like a dead hand or whatever and i'll be like well how did that person get here like that fake scream like what's going You're on with thinking that thinking about <laughs> yeah like wow. i'm the logistics like did someone drag them in here like who are the, all these like all these women died like they have like where are their parents where are their children like someone's yeah. missing them right now and like, that I'm doesn't just, like, distract you from the scariness no it just makes it worse because i'm like these poor people like and we're not going to oh, save okay. them they're all dead you know yeah i just feel bad <laughs> it's a bummer so okay so yeah we see the arms holding chandeliers we have the the, the statue faces um a table with food served by a hand yeah. and again <laughs> like it's like in the table yeah serving the food this would be i'd love rolling up to my community theater and seeing this happening and right? he <laughs> yeah he like peers under the table, the table. Like, looking for legs or just yeah person. also going back to the statues the ones that are like embedded in the fireplace yeah. they have to sit there and deal with smoke and fire like heat all the time yeah especially I mean, the ones with that coming out of its mouth yeah. Yeah. yeah i was like god that's horrible that was that was really weird but no, I 100% love the moment when the guy like looks <laughs> under the table to see if there was a full human being. Uh -huh. What was he yes. hoping? What was he hoping? That yeah, he what's the best some, case? Some, yeah, I can't, I can't even scenario. do it. The camera. Best case like... scenario is that he looks under the table and there is a, just a full grown man with his arms sticking up <laughs> to the table and he's yeah. just crouched below there. He, it's just really weird performance art. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, sir, please don't look under the curtain. This is a, the illusion. This is for uh, my senior thesis on... <laughs> Uh, farm to table and people not knowing where their food comes from and <laughs> slave labor involved yeah I love it love it yes. that's terrific performance it's performance art, art. yes yeah. <laughs> so uh he he falls asleep at the table he's like I'm gonna leave wanders through the gardens he sees a dead deer uh dead dove do not eat and then he uh he sees a rose and he picks the rose and the beast appears uh yeah hannah do you want to give me the give the description <laughs> okay so i didn't come up with this right away but it wasn't until like he was like walking away his boots he's got boots with the fur he is that girl at the club <laughs> he's got them tight jeans those apple bottom jeans boots with the fur like he's clubbing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Clubbing, in, that clubbing that deer to death clubbing that deer to death uh yeah so he's Again, we have the same thing where he's like, your daughter will have to come and live with me. Don't call me sir. I am not a dom. I am not into that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my scene, okay? Uh, just get, you just assume because I'm dressed in fur. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm very vanilla. Uh, so uh, the merchant is like, gets on the magic sparkle pony. And rides home because yeah. the, I think the horse the horse is named Magnifique or Magnificent. Magnifique. Yeah. Magnifique. Yeah. But magnifique. my my cousins have this tradition. They have a my little pony they call Princess Sparkle Pony. And whoever's being the most whiny on family vacation is like given Princess Sparkle Pony <laughs> as a way to be like, check yourself, like you're Princess Sparkle Pony today. Like, uh, yeah. 
I love so, that. Yeah. Okay, so the logistics here is that he's going to just kidnap the merchant and keep him. No, he's going to so kill he, him. He's going to kill him. Okay, so does he like inflict him with a malady? He's no. going to eat him, right? Yeah, I but think he, so. It's but the honor system. He's like, come back so that you can die. And he's or, like, I will. Trust I will him. show up and drag one of your kids out, like in the Brothers Grimm version. Right. Yeah. So then later, he's like sick in bed when Belle goes back home. So that's why I thought I was like, did I he think like, he's curse just him or something? Sad. Or is he just being just a like bitch? Oh, he was just, yeah, he was just oh, like, okay. I'm so sad that my daughter's gone that I'm okay. just going to waste away. He's... I thought I missed a little magic or something. Yeah, he has whatever yeah. Arwen had, where like Sauron's bad vibes were killing her. <laughs> uh-huh. That's the yeah. bad vibes of the situation. The Evanescence so, yeah. era. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah. Old men can have their Evanescence era too. You know what? Just no judgment. Young women. No judgment. Yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> Evanescence. Uh, so they go and the sisters they blame Belle, you know, like you asked for a rose, and then Ludovic is like, they're so annoying, Avenant, you should slap them. And then he <laughs> does, and he's like, Why yeah. did you slap my sister? Which is an appropriate response. Yeah, but you were the you one introduced that. slapping into the conversation. And yes, how is how is the audience supposed to respond? Like, is that like slapstick comedy, quite literally? Yeah, or was or, it, or are we just like oh. it was supposed to be that like he's a bad guy because he slaps women? Right. It was so hard to tell if they were trying to code him as a bad guy yeah. because of how the end ends up. Yeah. Yes. Because I felt like maybe they wanted us to think that he was a bad guy so that we'd be rooting for him to die, and that's why they al- like yeah. had him he, show that slap as Ooh. himself with his long hair that he does attempt to flip one time yeah he I does that. <laughs> he, uh, it he goes does. nowhere yeah um but that as that he's an actual beast in sheep's clothing if he's very nice looking but he's he's a terrible person yeah but at the end spoiler yeah. alert what we see maybe is that he's hot and a good person well it's and it's, it's, it's not actually him it's just a guy who looks like him it's a the beast becomes I don't know. I have questions. It's the values yeah. dissonance thing that yeah. sometimes happens in old movies where like that's okay behavior. Yeah. Right. But you know what? My hot take, my grandma got married in 1959. And you know, when my grandpa passed away, she was like, such a good husband. You know, other people's husbands hit them. He never laid a finger on me, which is the bare minimum. And my grandpa was actually a very good man. And he did more than just not hit her. But like, <laughs> like you're but thinking like, of a, a real glowing recommendation. Yeah, no, he was like, but she was just like, yeah, like other people, like he never did that. And so I think even in the forties, it yeah. was like, yeah. we don't like being hit. Like that's, I think that was the thing. Yeah. Because yeah. I, cause it also was like, instead of it making him look bad, it was maybe for the audience to feel like they got to slap the annoying lady. sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so like the audience was supposed to be like, oh good, oh, those God. annoying beetles yeah, we like, hate finally them. got it in the face. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's like all the- all the <laughs> Finally it, got it in the in face. The, <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> like the way I said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the vibes, the sexy vibes of this uh, movie. Uh, it's, oh, uh-huh. it's like when you see old comics and it's like super man's like slapping with or spanking women i think there's yeah. comics where batman is spanking robin and like that was just like normal yeah you said old comics and i thought like stand-up comics and I'm like, like rodney yeah. dangerfield up there like that was spec yeah uh so Belle goes there on Magnifique at night. She's like, nobody's stopping me. And she arrives. She slow-mo runs through the castle past these billowing curtains. I, I she glides that, down the room. Yeah, this, she's literally gliding in, yeah. down the hallway. I'm like, like, the slow-mo when she was running, it was interesting because as a woman, I also like went back at this point too. Because when she first came in and she was like slow-mo running, she reached across like her own chest and was like holding herself. Holding her- yeah and i was like i was like girl yeah because if you're running too much and they Uh, just like bounce and if she was doing slow-mo that like that would have looked very obvious so i was Mm. wondering every time her arm like when i saw it cross oh i was like like, as a woman i was just like oh is she trying to keep the ladies like in check because you don't want one of them popping out of your dress or but i i don't know that might have been i was saying too much mm. no then, i agree shout out I to think, the heavy boob song and crazy yes. girlfriend yeah. <laughs> well i think not even 
just that, but like her dress is really pretty low cut. Mm. Yeah. And then I can't imagine she's wearing a bra or at yeah. least a bra that's going to be really covering much. So yeah. Cause yeah. in some of the other outfits that are a little like looser, more billowy, she did look like she's got, she's got a good amount yeah. uh, going on. And so, yeah, I'm like, she, I, I'm like, oh, did she not have the, the like bra support to like stop uh, the pain of running with, or even is it like, this is too sexy. We're yeah. seeing your boobs go up and down in slow motion. We can't have yeah. that. Yeah. So had, uh... it was just, it was just so funny. Cause it was just like, as a woman seeing like that, that movement being like, sweetie, I've done that too Mm -hmm. is what you're doing what and so it's just like funny but then yeah when she when the curtains were billowing in that scene and she was obviously on some kind of gliding mechanism (laughs) they they were pulling the rope rope. yeah (laughs) and she's just like (laughs) yeah like a trance yeah yeah Yeah. and uh, yeah so dramatic I had a coworker who once they were loved Wonder Woman. So when they were a kid, they like tried to dress up in the costume. Be like, how is she running in this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. good point. Uh, but yeah, she's gliding. It's uh, for whatever reason it makes me think of like a Britney Spears music video, or like a uh, yeah, like every time should be playing in the background. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she gets to the room, and like in the story, the room is like, "Hi, I'm your room." Uh, so she goes in. <laughs> I love that. It was like the next evolution of the Internet of Things where you just walk up and random objects start talking to you and explaining how to operate them. Like, yeah, I'm the mirror. Look at me and I show you what you want. Like, I'm your refrigerator. I keep your food cold. And it's yeah. this 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 gorgeous room. She sees the mirror. It shows that her dad is sick. It's this room. Yeah. And the sheets move. They're like, oh, Ooh. that was so weird. It, uh, that was some like paranormal activity shit right there. Yeah. When when it like roop off of the bed uh-huh. i pers like personally if that was me inside of that room and there were male voices talking to me that i couldn't see from all of these couldn't see. Places, i would feel very uncomfortable and then when the the blanket was like oh also i move all over your body on my own accord i'd be like ah nah that's not right <laughs> well that's no, what no. that's what bell did she was she was like no. this is yeah this is- i would have whistled for magna feet to come back yeah <laughs> come like, get me nope I don't want to be groped by these sheets, oh, by the blanket. Yeah. yeah, that character didn't make it to the Disney version. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine why. The creepy, the creepy Chamberlain who's like a blanket. <laughs> Lumiere and Cogsworth like tricked him one day and like stuffed him in a trunk. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, he's like still in there. Like, Get me out. But they were like, Lumiere's like, no, that was too creepy. I know what I'm doing with that feather duster, but that blanket, that's another yeah. thing that's inappropriate. The feather duster's into it, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the beast appears out of like the big gates, the stable gates, and then she faints. And he, <laughs> unlike the bell in the story, she's so scared she faints. She loves the swoon. And so he yeah. picks mm. her up and her dress as he's carrying her transforms into this beautiful gown. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. gowns. Uh and there's this is where we get that kind of bubbling like sexual tension, bestiality, like man, beast, beautiful woman, like thing as he yeah. lays her on the bed. Yeah. But and he like carries like her this. for like two minutes and you watch like the entire journey like every yes. step of the way like yeah and we could the have cut music, a the lot music of that. Even, the music even stops yeah yeah, yeah. it's just well so <laughs> dead silent it's like the andy warhol movie where you're just watching someone sleep for like nine hours it's like walking someone walk, walk up the stairs carrying a person they do that a yeah. lot in this movie and other old movies and this was a debate we got into on glee boot when we we're doing the special on falling for christmas with Lindsay lohan and court overstreet and we were, uh, our co-host was like, wanted the scene to show where everyone had moved in like this Christmas manner, wherever they were. And I was like, we don't need it. I can assume. And these yeah. movies were like, no, you need to know where they're walking. You need to know. They need to walk down the hall, up the stairs, <laughs> like showing you the whole set. Uh, and so uh, I mean, later she wakes up, she goes to dinner. He appears behind her dramatically. And we have the same convo from the Beaumont story where he's like, yeah. I'm ugly and dumb. And she's like, A, you have wit enough to know that you're dumb, which means you're not that dumb, which is true. Yeah. That is a good point. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, plus many people look hot, but are monsters inside. Like yeah. Avenant. Like Avenant, yeah. The the line that's so interesting to me of the like, I'm not quick witted. And then the like, well, you're quick enough to know that you're not. It was 
something that comes up in French work of that time a lot Mm -hmm. where, um, because having wit was one of like the most important things was like being quick witted, being known for like, just that, like cleverness. And so like that whole thing, it shows up in other stories with like, um, Charles Pearl and stuff that Ricky and the tough. Yeah, like, it's Ricky of the time. I'm like Ricky, yeah, the like Ricky it's of his the band. Tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ricky du le tuf or whatever, and it's just like, yeah. Um, yeah. but like in a lot of French stuff, because that wit is so important. Oh, what is that game? It comes up in um, like Cinderella. They like use it in the um. Uh, is it Roger and Hammerstein? Oh, the, the stage so, play. Yeah. I saw where they like make fun of each other. Yeah. Like, be witty. Wh- yeah. Um, and like, so there's like games like, oh, ridicule. That's what like yeah. the game is. And so, but like, that was a thing that people like did that because, roast, yeah. Yeah. Um, and to perform that you're like a witty person. And so I just thought that was so interesting that like, yeah, that same conversation of, Oh, but as long as you're smart enough to know that you're not smart, that's something. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) it's true, but also why is it so important? (laughs) It's very important to them. Well, I mean, to be fair, I remember as a kid when like kids would be like making fun of each other as someone who's very tall, whenever someone called someone else short, I was like, Hey, you're all short to me. And (laughs) B like, that's, that's like not a funny joke. Like, yeah, like Asian should be making fun of someone in general, but I'm like, like what like okay they're like I knew I did nothing to achieve being tall like it just happened I was (laughs) like you're like whenever someone did that I'm like oh you're not funny okay okay you're not funny you know Mm, yeah like yeah and so it's like just because you have the capability to make fun of somebody that doesn't mean you're intelligent exactly just means you're mean yeah Yeah. or funny yeah it's like it just means you're mean Yeah. yeah I saw a TikTok about that there like people say if you if you're real if you say, oh, I just keep it real. And the only things you say are mean. That just means you're a real bully. Mm-hmm. Nah. Shout out to Felicity and Adelaide. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> this scene. I wouldn't slap dinner, them, but. Yeah, it's true, the first true. Time, dinner for the first time. Is this, he literally is like, every day at dinner, I'm going to ask you to marry me. And so I'm going to watch you up. eat. I'm not going to eat. I'm going to watch you eat. Yeah. 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 He never eats. Maybe he's not that vanilla. Maybe he's well, yeah. Maybe he he's has a, a he has a bang. Kink. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He has a kink. It's mukbang. It's fine. Yeah, he's watching <laughs> those those Trisha Paytas mukbang videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's gonna watch her eat and ask her to marry him every night, and she's like, "Oh gosh." You know that's <laughs> I do really the every night thing is one of the, my least favorite elements of the story, and I'm glad it was yeah. removed from the Disney version and that. Because it really just gives the vibe that she eventually says yes. Because she's so- yeah, she gets worn down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we all. I feel like a lot of people would. <laughs> He's just like, okay, I'm trapped here anyway. So yeah. uh, they start building a relationship. You know, like he's giving her fancy jewelry. Obviously, the most important step in any relationship. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They walk through gardens because she's like, you know what? I don't feel hungry today. Let's go for a walk. Uh, mm-hmm. And like Twilight, he has to like he's overcome by his urge to like attack animals uh-huh yeah uh, the walks that they would go on together those scenes for me were so weird just because the conversation was always the same of like oh yeah i'm 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 super ugly i'm an animal and she's like okay yeah she's like you probably think about what an animal I am. She's like, I mean, I guess. <laughs> and then he just Maybe like, because you keep saying it. <laughs> yeah, because you keep bringing it up. And, and so like, yeah, it was, that was the part of the movie that I felt like dragged the most yeah. was that, which I think the movie could have done better if they had gone back to the, like that, the dreamscape yeah. Uh, yeah. fairy stuff. I really wish that they had kept the, like not all of the fairy stuff oh my gosh that was intense <laughs> but the element um, of the dream and you could have made it yeah. less weird and creepy than it was in the the book he, or yeah even just i think again is what disney does is it adds activities and things for them yes. to do together yeah. to build a relationship like dating you know when yeah. you do things together and you talk about things that matter yeah. to you teach them how to read yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i that's why like that's my main thing with this movie is that uh I don't really feel like they actually build a relationship because 
like you said, yeah. they just talk about the how same. she's so uggo. And it's, yeah, so that's why, like, I, to me, it feels like a weird jump by the time we get to where she's yeah. like, yeah, I'll marry you. I love you, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And because of the way that it ends, I wonder about that one conversation where he's like, "Do did you ever love some, or did you ever yeah. have like a suitor? Any, yeah, yeah, did you ever have a suitor? And she's like, yes. And he's like, was he handsome? And she's like, yes. And like was asking all these questions. And then he, oh, most iconic exit of a scene <laughs> ever. Him jumping into the bushes and then just like full on like running. Yeah. That was that was one where I had to like pause it and then physically do it physically myself it. because I was like, no, I'm feeling this movie. I have to like pause it and act out this scene for myself. Best iconic. But I wondered if like her saying that was what then made him assume the form of that guy later yeah, because I she had that said, same thing too. like her reward for being good or something was that the prince looked like the guy the that she, she had thought lost. was hot well, i know well, i mean we're, yeah. we're i guess maybe we could talk about when we get there but they also they switch places yeah. like the guy who is the beast on the inside becomes the yes! beast and he becomes yeah. that guy so it's kind of he like got shot in the did he get shot in the butt or was it the back? It was the back, but we could say the butt. If we can say the butt. The buck. <laughs> the, butt. The, the buck. In the buck. <laughs> I was going to say the back is the butt of the torso. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, because he, because, but he does say, did you love him? And she says no. Yeah, which then at the end, she's like, that I mean, weird thing where she's like, no, I mean, yeah. I would have loved if she was like, yeah, he was hot and I like liked him, but his like personality sucks. So now it's like, I get the good personality with the good looking guy. Like, yeah. The best of both worlds. Shout out yeah. to Miley. If, yeah. Yeah. If she had been like, oh yeah, he's nice, but he hits women and he forces himself on me and doesn't care about my feelings. And yeah, like if she had reasons for it, because yeah. there were reasons to not like that guy, I felt. For sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's also this thing too, where he's like, you're the mistress here, right? Like, if you want me to walk away, I'll walk away. Like, and this happens in the fairy tale a lot. And it's always like, oh, you're the mistress. And I'm like, but it's like, if I was the mistress, I think it's choice one is I get to leave, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, you know, can control where I go. Uh, but then I also wondered, like, what is keeping her there? Because it's like, when he is like, okay, you can leave. But if you don't come back, it's not like, oh, if you don't come back, you'll turn into a duck or, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, I'll just be so sad. I'll die. Yeah. yeah and so like, I'm like, wait, is it, is it the threat of him chasing her down and bringing her back? Like, that's keeping her there? Like, what's the implied threat i mean i know right. he's obviously killing he's obviously killing the deer right so yeah. i guess he has the ability to kill her and then we haven't gotten to it yet but there is it, that scene where he shows up covered in blood outside of her room for no reason yeah, yeah. we're i'm gonna try and like the second act is very nebulous and and so like we'll yeah quickly... yeah i'm so sorry no but it is something with like the uh even in the disney version i think because in the video i watched with the stockholm syndrome they point out Really, the only thing that's keeping Belle there, at least in that version, is a verbal agreement. Right? Yeah. There's not even a threat to her father's life in that version. It's basically, and I feel like it's kind of true of this Belle too, where her life back home isn't that exciting. So she's like, <laughs> well, I as well. I like yeah. that it's like the only yeah, thing that's I, keeping her there is the honor system. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that she doesn't have to do like chores for the entire household there. Like yeah. all the household chores yeah. are taken care of by unseen magical forces. I don't even have to open my forces. own door. Yeah. 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 So it I, have to, I have to move my legs. I float down the hall. Yeah, I guess yeah. slide. So I have to cut, tuck myself in at night. The shoes just <laughs> the slither their way all over me. To climb up on me. I oh. love it. They uh, move around a lot when I'm just laying there, but you know it's okay. I yeah. guess. Better than dealing with my sisters and my <laughs> dumbass brother. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so they're like, they do various uh, things. Uh, sometimes there's a scene where she like follows him in the hall and he then he's mad and then he's all bloody and she glares and it burns him because her look makes him mad or like the look burns him because he's glaring. I, listen, I loved that scene so much. It kept making me think of like one particular TikTok sound though, just because like the movie's in French. So you're listening to it in French and uh, like subtitles and so he shows up at her door and she's like why are you covered in blood 
and he's like pardon uh, and, and she's like pardon for what and he was like for being a beast and I was like why are you there and then he's like don't look at me uh but this sound that I kept thinking of like was this TikTok sound I hope other people have like heard it where this person's like I'm sad and then there's like a long fart noise and then he's like pardon good night <laughs> like that's like the whole sound and like that's fully what I thought of when he was like pardon <laughs> but, uh, but also just like for being a beast it's like well you've yeah. been a beast so I don't know why yeah. <laughs> yeah why are you showing this off like yeah I, I actually have expected him to have dropped like a dead animal at her door like, like a, a cat, cat. Yeah. Like, yeah that's yeah. what I thought was gonna happen it didn't he was just like he was smoking yeah. yeah why was he smoking he Can smokes we... a couple times yes and then the Her glove he burns smoked. him i thought oh i thought he I like thought... smoked when he killed or something like yes because oh. in the guillermo del toro thing he was that's what he said he was like when he kills oh, an yeah. enemy or when he when he kills he's sort of being punished for it so he like he starts to burn and smoke up oh yeah, yeah. i didn't get so that I don't by know. watching it but i'm glad that somebody had some kind of thinking behind it but i like what Cullen said that like there's something about her that makes him because that makes more sense for her yeah. like in Bridgerton <laughs> oh Bridgerton very sexy Bridgerton yes. I've heard and it's now, very sexy let's apply I the logic of both of these you. things to that one uh fireplace statue that also smokes randomly does he also have the hots Listen, for Bell? He has or does he smoke when he kills his enemies <laughs> <laughs> has an addiction okay yeah you can't help it he's he was like vaping and we just didn't see like <laughs> there's a, a stone arm <laughs> <laughs> he was just smoking between like uh you know between takes and the direction yeah. like let's and it's use a that long cigarette because he's french <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the man. French are gonna hate this. Uh, not as much <laughs> but, they hate Emily in Paris, though. So, but yeah, I was just pardon, like, France. Like, pardon, pardon. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the, there was so many objects that there was like smoke coming off of, and because yeah. even at one point, like when she's like either putting on the glove or taking it off, it starts smoking, and I'm like why is everything, why is everything smoking? smoking i think it's an effect cinema. they could do <laughs> cinema <laughs> i like that answer yeah i think it was an effect they could do they're like oh this is cool they just kept we doing should it. do it for everything. like every company that puts out a new camera these days too has smoke like billowing through it just it looks cool yeah yeah when you it's like uh when you're a kid and you discover all the different transitions on like windows media player <laughs> yeah and so was, i was gonna say slideshow the slideshows <laughs> yeah yeah uh-huh uh i this movie needed more star transition <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh and so yeah he's the she sees him drinking once like from the water like an animal yeah can that... i say that was another one that i acted out with my body <laughs> because i i understood from a practicality standpoint because like for anybody who has not seen the movie, it is one of the most awkward <laughs> body moments of the whole thing. But from a practicality standpoint, I feel like I understand what's happening because it's like the water level that he's supposed to drink out of is very low and he's up on what is like supposed to be a bank. But so he has to be lapping up the water like an animal, except that he can't reach it and he can't put his arms obviously in the water in to the stabilize water. him. And so his body is like, halfway off of this ledge he's trying to lean down to the water but he looks like some weird fish dude and i Bob love in his head his whole body yeah, yeah his whole body and like the reaction of this woman when she sees that is to just be like well nope and like walk away <laughs> but then <laughs> it she's like into, into the story him. though yeah like Be the fact that he drinks so gross and disgusting and yet she's still when he's like gonna die of thirst or whatever i don't know what was going on yeah. with him that he'd like really need water she's like drink for my hands and the fact that she would let him do that was like a big deal yeah and then because it like, is so disgusting how he drinks no and then he was like like um i really want to know if anybody has like better french than me uh because like when he drank out of her hands he was like oh you like you're not disgusted with me so much that like you're willing to let me drink out of your hands and then she says something like no it's fine i like it mm. but the french that she spoke was not french that i recognized translated into i like it and, yeah. but the subtitle said i like it 
but because if that is what she said that was again a little yeah. sexual uh because yeah. he's like I licking like out of her hands and he's like oh you don't think that's gross and she's well, like he also no, he gets I on his knees it. licking out of her hands and looks up at her yeah mm. and she's like so. no i like it and i'm like okay mm. okay mm. what is this movie not going to shame but mm. i am a little the confused. sexiest version of beauty and the beast like, in the <laughs> early. Early. Nah. yeah and i'm like did this inspire the porridge scene in the disney movie Oh my god, <laughs> maybe. Uh, well, because I couldn't have him walk around oh, covered in blood. And like yeah. licking water out of her yeah, hands. Yeah, and so he's and like, like her being slurping like, the porridge like all over. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. so glad that in the animated movie, she didn't have like a scoop full of porridge in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> like lopping down. Yeah, for like, uh, <laughs> And then lumpy. she's like, no, I uh. like it. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh yeah so he later she's also petting him and he's like you pet me like an animal she's like well you are an animal matter of fact she's like you're an animal so i'm gonna pet you meanwhile the dad back home is losing all his money because of ludovico and uh, his shenanigans unclear well Uh, yeah yeah they take everything with the bed yeah it's because he he had spent so much money on drinking and gambling that yeah. they were like calling in his debts and he had promised away like all the furnishings of the house. If yeah. they, but he was like, oh, my dad can cover it because some he's about to go be shit. rich. Yeah, he's yeah, about to go was, be rich. Because they're like, the guy came to collect from him and he's like, I can't pay it. He's like, well, you know, if I can't get it from you, I can take it, illegally I could take it from your dad. Sue but there was dad. like some paperwork and the yeah. other guy, the jerk guy was yeah. like, go ahead and sign it. What can you lose? Like, it doesn't affect you. Another yeah. side of like, he's such a a-hole. He doesn't care about this yeah, family he's and the like, fact they're oh, gonna take everything I'll... that he owns. Because yeah, also like, oh, it, it only... does affect him because he's a kid who lives in that house. But also apparently yeah. Avanant lives there too. He hangs out. They're, they're there playing a lot. chess and they like remove it. Yeah, Mid game. They take and their, he's still their, holding like a piece. Pile. I was like, that it's gonna be missing a chess piece because they yeah, walked off and worthless. he still got in his hand. No, yeah, and you know that he bought you know that friend yeah. like some drinks while they were out like partying. Like that's why this guy hangs around. Like he's you know. He's a leech. This yeah, this scene was... did make me think of the opening of Schitt's Creek. Yes, oh. <laughs> yes. Where he's like, I, you just wish that there was somebody who was crying, holding all their wigs. <laughs> That's what this movie really needed. Yeah, yeah. I think I made that reference in our Catherine episode too. O'Hara. I was like, this is like Schitt's Creek. Like a, a once formerly rich family has to go and live in their like in a yeah. country, middle of nowhere country place because they can't afford their lavish yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, because the anymore. only place that they have left is yeah. this like place out in the country. Uh, so yeah meanwhile Belle misses her dad and uh, he's like you can go for a week but if you don't come back I'm gonna die Uh, also I trust you with the key to Diana's pavilion and it controls my wealth I have five sources of power the pavilion so the key my glove that can transport you the magic mirror which you're also taking with you uh, my horse and the roses. Unclear what the roses do, but I'm glad there was. Try, they try to give some explanation of like why yeah. they was worthy of death if you mess with the roses. Yeah. Uh, so he, yeah. So that he's like, please come back. Uh, and so she promises, goes through the wall, puts the glove on, pops through the wall, puts the golden key down her bra, nature's my, pocket, nature's does. pocket. That's my favorite. Well, all uh, sorts of things there: keys, candles. I'm sorry her breasts have become like like this uh, another character. I feel like it's mind. what he wanted. I That's yeah. why she was putting her hand across her chest when she was running. She didn't want all of her money and things to just come flying out. Yeah, she's got a lot floor. in there. Her she lip does. gloss. Her cell phone. <laughs> her lip, that's her cell phone, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, those coins, loose change. Yeah. Old timey dresses though did actually have pockets. That's my uh, favorite, one of my favorite fun facts. Like ball gowns had like big ass pockets that were literally just sacks that could just like yeah, crush because, it in the, there. because they needed them. And yeah. also, if you're gonna have that much fabric, there better be yeah. a pocket in there. You <laughs> can hide yeah function yeah yeah. So uh, she also she starts crying diamonds uh, <laughs> as she weeps for her father, and it restores him to health. <laughs> And it yeah. was like kind of strange. She's like, oh, this is proof that the beast like loves you and is giving you stuff that you're crying diamonds. Like, that's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, but... he's sick <laughs> and sick, kind of sick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then she cries diamonds. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna pluck that from your face. And then she's like, Don't show the sisters. 
It's giving Grandpa Joe from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sick in bed for 20 years until you get a free trip to a chocolate factory. Yeah. He's like, oh, diamonds, I'm fine. A couple little diamonds. Yeah. yeah, he's like, it's fine, I'm fine. I'll get over it. Uh, diamonds are a sick dad's best friend. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so meanwhile, her dumbass family is really bad at doing the laundry because she's like, who's doing the laundry? They're like, oh, we are. And she's like, Mm, okay. well it's dragging all over the floor <laughs> or on the ground uh and they're amazed by her riches and she's like oh felicity here's the, the pearl necklace and then it turns oh. into like ugly rope A vine yeah and yeah. they're like he meant for you to have it and the sisters are like we could tell the church about this and get her burned yeah <laughs> i actually thought that's where this was gonna go that they were gonna have like a yeah. witch hunt like that's where i was like oh that's where Kill the, disney the beast thing. yeah yeah i was like that's where disney got that nope nope uh, that didn't happen. But that would have been way more interesting. Yeah. Avanon is like jealous and they're asking about the beast. And then she's like, no, like he's nice and I like him. And he's like, oh, the beast obviously cursed her to like make her right. like, using magic. Which, you know, to be fair, mm -hmm. if I was her family and I wasn't garbage like they were and she came out, <laughs> oh, the beast loves me. I'd be a little like, let's think about this. Yeah. Yeah. Again, a bit of an the man who is holding you against your will in his compound yeah uh compound. Yeah. <laughs> is he jared leto yeah <laughs> <laughs> ezra miller blink twice yeah. as ezra miller uh so uh avanant tries to like get her to tell about this the treasure and the key because like the sisters and the boys are like plotting against them now and so she mentions the key and then she's like but i said too much uh, but then they they rub their eyes with onions, right? To get her to cry and be like, take care of us, we need you. She's already back in her rags. <laughs> like, yeah, her yeah, they already got her working again. Prime example of in family dynamics, you're always the same person in your family. Like you can leave and be a different person and yeah. you come back to and your family, back. you're expected to fulfill yeah. the same role. Yeah, yeah, you end up reverting back into that because that's how you get treated and you fall into those family systems. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. This story is about family counseling. <laughs> <laughs> and the lack of it in France. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then the, the, the loser squad captures the magic horse that's trying to get her to come back. The loser and... squad. Perfect. Because <laughs> you want to say her siblings, but one of them is this dude. Yeah. And like, the, the brother, the kiss sisters, her her the will. brother, the brother's friend. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is the loser squad. You were loser right. Squad, yeah. And they, they take the horse and they're like, oh, we can use this to get back. Hop in, and... losers. We're going to Beast's Castle. <laughs> going to Beast's Castle. <laughs> yeah, they say the phrase that they have the to say. Like, va, 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 va. Take me okay. wherever I need to go. Kind that of thing. reminds me, that was something that I loved about that little detail of the, like it was a white horse. Because I think it's east of the sun, west of the moon. Where it's kind of like, he's like, the horse knows where you're going. Yes. Yeah. So just yeah. say you're going to go where you're going and then it go. And that's exactly like the, the hags crags, and the crags. The, yeah. The, the hags, hags and the crags are like, crags, yeah. yeah, they just know where they're going. So, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because again, we like that is a, you know, East of the Sun, West of the Moon is a related story to Beauty and the Beast. But seeing again, he knowingly obviously was pulling from these other references to put it in here because that wasn't how it happened in, the, in you know, lots of the others. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were talking about like their how to carry the trunks and the NFTs and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's one of those things like logistically story wise. Cause I know like people will complain if like a story changes when it moves to like film or something and they're like, oh, they changed that. And it's like, well, they had to because they had to get the people to where they were going. They couldn't use the magic glove because then she would have no way to get back with the magic glove. So what is another way that we can get these people moving we need to introduce another magical thing oh let's use that horse as a yeah so it's like i can see how even though it wasn't in the story they needed yeah. a vehicle to and it get. makes sense and it, it's a logical choice yeah. Yeah. yeah and it was cool that it also relates you know it's yeah. in the way fairy tales do pulling from other tales to add your elements that people may or may not be familiar with. that's not the most well-known tale but um yeah so i i liked it. i thought it was a really cool detail yeah uh, the sisters, so they send Avenant and Ludovico, they're going to go take the treasure and kill the beast. They're going to get rich. Uh, and the sisters look in the mirror 
one looks ugly and old not even ugly just old and then yeah yeah. the other one is a monkey (laughs) a monkey i think it's the one that that. wanted a monkey that's what i thought too i was like is it the one that said she wanted a monkey that's perfect i love that yeah Yeah. she's a monkey on the inside (laughs) (laughs) just wanted her spirit spirit. animal yeah Yeah. Uh, she wishes (laughs) yeah she Uh, wishes she was as cute and cool as a monkey (laughs) yeah uh, and they see Belle is dressing up in her like mag- in her like princess gown, and they're like, "Oh, dressing up like a princess when no one's here." Uh, and they're like, "You're shallow. Look at a mirror to show the shallow person who had abandoned the beast." Uh, and she's like, "Oh, I need to go to the beast, but I'm missing the key." And then like this whole thing where like she looks in and she's the beast, and the mirror breaks, and she's like, "Don't have time to find the key. I gotta put the glove yeah. on." Glove. Smoke and glove. Uh, Wakes up mm-hmm. in the palace and she's looking for the beast. Uh, the guys, meanwhile, they arrive and they see like the Diana's pavilion. She's like this vault. And Ludovico goes to use the key. <laughs> and yeah. Avanant is like, well, don't use the key because it might set off a trap. It's so weird to me that there is the key. The key never gets used. Yeah, I'm like, why did you steal the key if you weren't going to use the key? key? Come on. If you see the key, you got to put it in a lock yeah. in the third second. If act. you put key in the woman's boobs. Yeah, what, you got to use that key. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, oh, key. I, and then they're how, like, oh, let's not use it. I love how their plan backfired. They're like, we can't use the key because there might be a trap. Let's break in and activate the statue oriented uh, security system yeah. instead. Yeah. The Diana like yeah. statue. Trap. It, they climb up to the glass ceiling. Uh, it is it is the glass ceiling. That was what was keeping women down. Yeah, uh, and yeah. they smashed it. The one good thing they did. <laughs> the the one movie. they smashed the glass. The glass ceiling was smashed by men. Thanks, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's why there's still a pay gap. <laughs> Jeff Jeff said it here first. <laughs> uh, so they, they they see all the riches and it's snowing and I'm like, is that asbestos? And then uh, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably is. Uh, and there's the Diana statue and shout out to the story where that guy watches Diana while she's bathing and she throws water on him and turns him into a deer and he's eaten by his own dogs. Yeah. Oh, oh shout which, out. Yeah, shout yeah. out to that. Uh, shout out to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so Belle sees the beast dying and is like, I'm so, so sorry. I'm the monster. I left you. I love you. I want to marry you. Uh, and then meanwhile, Avenant is climbing to the vault. Diana shoots him. Okay, so... <laughs> shoots him yeah, in the butt of the torso. The butt of the torso. The butt of the torso. So, baby got back. Uh, so... <laughs> well. <laughs> so... There you go. The beast turns into the prince, but he looks just like Avenant, and the Avenant turns into the beast. A beast. Yeah, the corpse of the beast. Yeah. It, Unclear. It kind of looks, well, so it kind of, to me, it just looked like a bunch of, like, animal fabric. Um, it was hard to look at to tell what was going on. Uh, so, okay, yeah, I have so many questions. What happens? What so, really yeah, because he's like... <laughs> uh do I look like she's like you I guess I can get used to this she like he, all bells she she's not show super him a into mirror. it it's like this is what you look like what does he yeah, he knows he's... she just knows which is the interesting thing yeah he's like yeah but he got a haircut right yes yeah because he or suddenly didn't style. have all of that yeah. In the back yeah yeah and so many viewers when this movie came out were disappointed by this. This is a theme in Being the Beast movies. They were disappointed. Disappointed like, by Adam. Yeah. yeah, they're like, where's the beast? Uh, and then uh, they're like, did, uh, I'm now I'm thinking, did the beast steal his body? Was it just like, was the love what broke the curse? Or was it, oh, someone else gets to be the beast because now? Because he says- and I take his body. And it's, it's like a, a Santa cycle. Claus situation. Yeah, it's <laughs> now in Santa Claus. The original Santa Claus, C-L-A-U-S-E Claus. Yes. The beast Claus. Yeah, so there's always a new hot guy who becomes the beast and the beast takes the hot guy's body. But, but- it has to be tricked into going into the Diana Pavilion. Yeah. So involving a he's... very long scheme <laughs> with the merchant, Take this his key. daughter. Don't use it. And they're like, don't worry, I won't. I'm going through the ceiling. The beast says that the reason that the spell's broken is that like a beautiful woman Loved looks him. at him. 
looks at him with love. That's yeah. Okay, gives yeah. him a loving look. And mm, so does Did she? she <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a question. And then yeah. also, so I don't know. Because I feel like people aren't telling us everything. I feel like both Belle and the Beast have because some Because also, secrets. if he's going back to his kingdom, where presumably people know what he's supposed to look like, and they're like, who the fuck is this guy? He sh- yeah. shows up with some woman that they've never seen before, like, we're the king and queen of this kingdom now. <laughs> and they're like, um, Denethor is on the throne. He's like, um, actually, I eat tomatoes, and this is my kingdom now. No, yeah, so it's like, <laughs> if he's supposed to be a specific person who was cursed and put here, what happens to that person? Yeah. Maybe like, there or was... is he a beast just in general and then he's just supposed to take on the ideal form of the person who loves him what they want. I, I mean, he was a human because he talked about how he was cursed to look like the, the spirit. Beast. But yeah, I mean, your point about him not looking like the person that he was when he became the beast is going to be a problem. Yeah, I yeah. feel yeah, like so he's he lying. changes. He literally changes for her. Oh, yeah. like literally changes. Like not not just a, be- a beast to, to human, be- but human to human as well. Yeah, yeah, yes. beast to human to human. So like- I mean, at least like the look thing explains kind of like that scene of when he's like Burning. covered in blood and he's like all smoking and then he's like, "Don't look at me! Don't look at me!" <laughs> And then why are you sitting outside my door? Yeah, why did you come outside of her door looking freaky at the off chance that she was going to look at you with love that time? He's like, maybe this is her thing. It's like, it's not. And he's like, okay, then don't look at me, don't look at me. And then that's his journey. His journey is like, what's gonna what can I do to make her love me? Maybe she's into blood. Maybe she's into she's the wounded bird kind of girl. That's what he wants. She wants to oh interesting you. Yeah. yeah I, this, she's a white so, yeah. girl on a mission trip yeah <laughs> this is, i've been on mission trips i can um, say it po- some poverty <laughs> porn to bring home to family and friends yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. i i don't understand i think this is one of the main things for me that like i wish there was more logic to whatever this curse was just like a little more i wonder if this is one of the difference between french cinema and like american hollywood like in american hollywood we want it common like sense have, yeah. a, have a logic. logic and they're like it's the dream it's and what if Ooh. yeah that's well, the spirit so- the spirit of the story the is what if where yes, there's not enough oxygen <laughs> yes. up there yeah it's like think of what happens next you're like we need more logic in the story the very next thing that happens is they just float off into the sky <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <a> billowing fabric <laughs> no yeah I'm like, this is the point where it was like, oh, we need some like logic. Why did this happen? Like, what's the backstory here? And then we have Villeneuve who was like, oh, you want backstory? I'll give you. And it's like, no, 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 not that much backstory, but we do need some. There has to be a middle ground between like that level of backstory and us understanding why did this guy turn into that other guy? but yeah. wearing Prince clothes. And so we is his name the backstory. Beast still? Or is or is she going to call him Avanat? Well, because he's call like, him Adam. Because this is yeah. where she's like, did you, he's like, did you, is that good? And she's like, mm-hmm. and he's like, did you love she him? She looks him yeah, up and down. Was, yeah. She's looking at those tight kind of like awkward. Yeah. Those tights, yeah. Even though they're like now in love or whatever, it's like, I look like that guy. Do you like that? I look like that guy? He's like, I do. It's like, did you love him? She's like, I kind of did actually. He was like, but do you love me? She's like, of course I do. Like, I mean, I guess you're the same person now. <laughs> I. Well, and he says, are you scared? And she's like, I'm never scared when I'm, or I don't mind being scared when I'm with you. Right. Like, yeah, that's right. like going on a date to a spooky haunted house. That's what this is. <laughs> right, yeah. Those Full are the circle. Vibes. Yeah. Yeah. She's I like. I think we do have, I think we do have a little bit of a clue as to why it makes no sense. Because there's one thing that made no sense at the very start of the movie where it's like, they've got the guy with the slate and he's like clapping. He's like, wait, 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 hold up. And then it's like this handwritten note from the director that's like, yeah. hey, guess what? Um, we like to tell children whatever we tell them and they just believe it. So, hey, why don't yeah. you just be like children and believe whatever we show you? Um, yeah. And open sesame, wish us luck. Here we go. Yeah, well, that's no, a really that's weird a really way to point. start a movie. Being yeah. like, 
we need you to just accept what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like just, I want to start a movie. There, like that. <laughs> Avengers That's, Endgame. Yeah. We need you to accept. Yeah. We need travel, you to the multiverse. On this one. Yeah. That's actually a really good point, though, because I completely forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. I so they they kind of know that like there's like a lack of enough logic, but they want you to be so captured by the fantasy yeah. love, which again, I don't think there's much love really going on, but whatever. It's something, it's something Guillermo del Toro talked about too, that what he loved about it was like, you know, I I think he went a little far. It was a really interesting movie to watch, but he's like the magic, it just makes you feel like the magic of things. Like you don't have to explain why the there are hands holding these candelabras all over the place. You don't have to explain all this stuff. You just like, go through Except this magical that. experience yeah which that i totally get like i i honestly don't need to question the, the spooky setting castle yeah because i i think it i think i don't yeah. have i mean i have questions but it doesn't keep me from enjoying it's, the story yeah because it's not the thing that the story is like the crux yes. of the story because him transforming is like meaningful because that's kind of the point of like yeah them falling in love and that's what transformed and so it's like okay how did that actually yes, work that like what made that really happen maybe bell is one of those people that like all their boyfriends end up looking the same she's got a type mm-hmm. she's yeah. got a type and she'll like make them that type i'm trying i feel like there's a piece of media where this is like a so plot she's point that I cannot... the toxic one she's the toxic oh, she's, she's the, the toxic the beast. one she's, she's the beast you know i think whenever you can just blame the woman for everything i think that's, that's a great, great way to end it yeah <laughs> <laughs> <Bell's fault. laughs> uh, yeah i think um i think we're just all kind of getting to the point where it's like we need more logic to the thing that makes us care about the movie and that's their love story yeah yeah like- that central and I, I wonder i wonder if there's a movie that delivers that we'll see who's to say uh so the movie the vibe you talked a lot about like the visuals you know interesting mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh, scary i actually yeah. found it very scary it was yeah. spooky spooky no yeah. i'm like i think if you go into it knowing okay this movie was made in the 1940s and on a low budget like the setting too i feel like they did a lot with what they had they had to build the illusion of like a full castle and did they do that with a lot of black fabric and uh like darkness boxes and stuff yes but like i felt like they they did a really good job for the budget that they had i felt like the the scenes that they put a lot of into the settings were like the the bedroom like yeah. her bedroom and then a lot of like the outdoor stuff yeah um and so the setting i was like you know what i dig it as like corny as it could be it was like no i like this i'll take yeah. a practical set with some oh, flaws yeah. over like cgi whatever absolutely yeah. i mean i watched once upon a time so i know how bad those backgrounds can get <laughs> they're just they're just in front of a bunch of green screen <laughs> Though the Villeneuve version made me think of Once Upon a Time because of all these weird, obscure ways these characters are suddenly made to be interconnected in ways that are like, why did we do this? Yeah. Which is the plot, the whole <laughs> the whole premise of Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, very dream, dreamy visuals. So characters, do we root for our protagonist? Do we root for Belle? I know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know. So. Like, I just... For me, I'm like, it was the daddy issues, I think, for me, where mm-hmm. I just was like, oh, I didn't like how she had so many daddy issues. And then I felt like she transferred a lot of that onto uh, the beast. Classic. Tales and of yeah. time. Like, she's like, oh, no, I have to be with my dad. I, I'll die if he dies. And then she's like, I have to go back to the beast. I can't let him die because he'll die if he doesn't have me. And, I'm like, and I'll die if he's dying. Yeah, I'm like, oh. Gosh, I'm a, not into you. A woman bearing uh, the social responsibility of all the men in her life. Very Karen Cartwright in Smash. Very Catherine McPhee in Smash. Yeah. yeah. It was like, so yeah, for me, I wasn't rooting for her, <laughs> which is was, sad. Yeah. I also, and I hate to compare it to the Disney version, but like, I don't necessarily think there's anything that likable about her, but I also mm-hmm. don't think that's her fault. Like, yeah, I think it's just like the product of this movie's time that yeah. like she's what we what we care about is the fact that she's being bullied and she's being forced to be a servant for her family. Like that yeah. sucks. But I'm also like, okay, but what else is there to her? Yeah. Because I'm like, sucks. 
I feel like what I was rooting for was for her to like do something with to herself. get out of a, to- yeah. a bunch of toxic relationships, yeah. and then she yeah. might be in another yeah. one. You're yeah. rooting for her, but not to do any of the things that she does. <laughs> yeah, like, <you're> like <laughs> well, I want yes, the best girl, for this woman, me, but no. she's not doing. No, anything don't go that. there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I would say I root for her. I think there's a vibrancy to the performance, but I think yeah. the writing is still kind of one note for her. And yeah. in a way, I think she's almost a step back from the Beaumont. I feel like I just feel like when I read the Beaumont, and this could be because I, I'm an American child who grew up with Disney, like a child of the mm-hmm. 90s, that like I see such a clear connection between the Belle and Beaumont and Disney. Right. And I feel yeah. like she's a little more generic in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like the fact that she's not brave, like in the one she, in the Beaumont story, she's brave and she faces the beast. She is. And then this, uh, she's wounds. Yeah. Which we love she's a Bella but... Swan. She's kind of yeah. an empty vessel. She's yeah. bullied and you know she doesn't have a happy life, but there's an in for the fact that she for care for people to yeah. like her or to root for her is that like she's kind of an empty vessel otherwise. You can kind of just supplant yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that leads into my take on the beast. I was like, he's a little self-loathing, a little proto Edward Cullen. Yeah. I wrote I t- that's typed in the notes. <laughs> I can verify. Yeah, I see, yeah. Cullen. yeah. Yeah, he's, and I he's also the other thing is like self-loathing, sometimes. but also self-loathing More is not an attractive, yeah, it's yeah. not an attractive quality. So I, yeah, I was rooting for him to like go to therapy. Yeah. I, so <laughs> is she kind of more, was, is it the Villeneuve version where, uh, he it no it's the ball version where it's like you should just settle because he's good at least yeah that's every yeah. version so that's yeah. kind of so like there's nothing really to like about him except the fact that he's nice and it just happens to work out for her like yeah. and i'm but i'm like is he nice he's gonna yeah. yeah he's because, outside yeah. her door at night Bleeding. yeah covered in blood and he <laughs> snuck he snuck into her bedroom yeah. Like while she was gone to go be to the mirror being like, mirror, where is she? And like was like, yeah. she was in the hallway. She didn't run away, dude. Mm-hmm. And now you look creepy sitting in her bedroom. Oh yeah. And she does call him out on it. She's like, Why are you yeah. in my bedroom. Yeah. yeah so he's kind so of a like, stalker. The only thing that's nice about him is he didn't kill her. That's yeah. uh, the the bars on the ground. The bars in the yeah. Basement. The bar <laughs> is the ninth circle of hell. Actually. Yeah, because I'm like the only nice thing that kind of he did was that he had a magic castle that it would give her nice things, like it would feed her, clothe yeah. her, shelter her, right. have yeah. a groby blanket. Like she <laughs> like called all the necessities. Blanket. Yeah, yeah, and so. But it's like, was that him being nice or was that him just being like, oh, I live here. Now you also are living here. Right. Yeah. So, and now yeah. that the curse is broken and they're free and they go back to his kingdom, like, is they're not still going to have a magical castle that's taking care of them, I would presume, right? Yeah. Like, so what's his niceness? I guess yeah. his niceness yeah. was he let her go back to her dying father if she promised to come back. Like, Bare I minimum. just, yeah, I'm like, he, yeah. The point that, is that he's nice, but I don't, I'm like, where's the evidence of nice? Yeah. Which, yeah. Again, maybe there's a version that does this a little better yeah. where it kind of, there's a wish of that builds, there's acts of kindness yeah. done. Yeah, you know? which yeah. Disney <clears throat> did. Like, yeah. that's what Disney wanted to show, like beat for beat those moments of like them starting to get to know each other better. The like, oh, he's so gentle that like he would, you know, the little birds lead out of his hand. He's trying to do manners. He's trying to self grow, yeah. like yeah. become a, a calmer anger management version of this himself. This beast is none of that. Yeah. yeah, this beast is none but of that. Also, none of the characters are, and like all the characters are just how they are and they don't change and none of their relationships change really throughout like the whole movie. It's just in in kind of like a fairy tale way, like, yeah. you know, in media we expect that that's kind of like what especially you know american movies it's like you you have this someone who's one way at the beginning and they go through this journey that is the movie that climax and it ends with them being a different person having learned something and it's like yeah. they if the annoying thing about it is in lots of fairy tales the characters are just very flat in one thing because it's like we're just trying to get this idea we're just trying to use kind of stock characters which is fine but this movie is like we want you to believe that she has changed and they've fallen in love but nobody changed and nobody 
like their relationship isn't any actually any different and yet we're supposed yeah. to believe that they are in love like right. but at least at least for the bad villains like the villains that they're like oh these people are like bad they did bad things yeah, yeah. so like they, they at least showed right. them doing bad things so that we were like oh those are the bad people they're like but, these people are good because we say they are you're just gonna have to trust us on this he's yeah. a really nice guy yeah <laughs> and, like, and it was like the only good thing that anyone did it was like uh bell was like oh i'm willing to sacrifice myself to go because but again it goes back to her like toxic relationship with her dad where she's like i i will go because i would die without my father not just i love my father and don't want him to, to like be yeah. by a beast yeah. which is a pretty normal uh thing yeah you know, i think a lot of people feel that you know it's, it's you know it's <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just think they don't show enough of them being nice. Because the next question is kind of like, do we ship them? And I just don't think there's enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. You know, and the Beast is, in this version, still a little bit of the incel. Because I get starting mm-hmm. off, I'm so ugly, how could anyone love me? But it, he stays there. It's all he talks about. It yeah. stays there even after he's transformed. He's like, do you still like it? Like, do I look good to you? Like, it's, he's very needy in that sense. Yeah, which, I mean, kind of goes back to, like, the thing of, like, if you don't love yourself the way that you are, like, right now, then no amount of whatever transformation you think is going to happen, whether it's, like, plastic surgery or, like, diet culture or whatever, is going to make you love yourself because, like, you need to just love yourself because you are lovable the yeah. way that you are. But it was, like, he went through a transformation that he... I get probably thought was going to make him feel better and then immediately demonstrated like nope still have all the same insecurities I had before yeah when I was you know at my like thinnest best shape like when I was in Boston I like my self-image and like my eating disorder stuff was like at its worst you know yeah like you're you're right like that it doesn't no amount of change will save you unless you can love yourself um yeah I think RuPaul says that I'm not a drag race watcher, but I watched it at a bar last night. (laughs) (laughs) And you have good takeaways (laughs) from that experience. Yeah. Other than the time RuPaul flipped me off, flipped me off in New York, but I kind of deserved (laughs) it. So, uh, yeah. So there is a queerness to the movie in that all like the unspoken sexual tension. Yeah, I don't have anything more to say about it, but that's that's I did notice that. Yeah, like the forbidden love, but still couched in a very heterosexual, like yeah, fairy yeah. tale ending. And that I wonder if that'll transfer in other adaptations. Uh, hmm. uh, our other characters, we get a dad who's pretty one note, and we get some disembodied Boo. hands. And loved statues. the disembodied hands. Yep, and loved the hands. I thought it was really favorite cool. characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> performance uh, art yeah. <laughs> yeah performance was, art guy mvp yeah. yeah yeah i was a little delighted every time i saw those like statue the fireplace mm-hmm. statue yeah guys. And, and they yeah. were just like oh my gosh this is so hot <laughs> yeah. Back and forth that's the hot yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that he's like oh he's totally or blowing it <laughs> yeah, he's really blowing <laughs> It's time about being ugly again oh my God. Uh, <laughs> we can't speak yeah. we can help him out uh, <laughs> Did you know he's like really good at Scrabble? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what do we think of our antagonist? We have Ludovico and the sisters. Uh, they're so sometimes, awful. Sometimes they're antagonists that I like. No, all these were awful. Yeah. Uh, they're just haters. They're haters yeah. in the Taylor Swift shake it off kind of way. Like, yeah, like there's no reason. They're just haters. Yeah. Yeah. And like not in he, any fabulous way at all. Like they <laughs> and then like Avanant, he he at least somewhat has a reason to like be an antagonist. Like they're just being awful. He like he likes her, and so he's being the worst to think he's gonna yeah. win her over or whatever, save her life, I guess. Yeah. Um, so at least there's like a logic to that, but they're just awful. Yeah. yeah. Is- and what what happens to the brother? The not they never show what happens to like the the rest of the family in the movie. Um, is that brother just wandering around that castle? Like, what the fuck is? Yeah, because it's like <laughs> the last we saw of the brother, he was holding on to Avenant as he like fell to the like turned into a beast and then fell to the ground. Oh, that was yeah. the last we ever saw. Of is him. he the bell in the new story? Is it like gay? <laughs> Because maybe now that's why he's falling he ha- in love with each other. Yeah. He mm. needed to see his bro as a beast and then see him in a new way. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe. Oh. I though I do wonder with Avenant, do we immediately read him as a bad guy because of Gaston? Because we I did not read him this. as a bad guy uh, until he tried uh, to kiss her. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's I what was, I picked I him up. I thought he was kind of like a, eh, but then he did that. I was like, mm, no. Yeah. Like, or when he like spun her around and was like holding her and was like, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, oh, nope. I don't like being grabbed by like, even people that I know and I care about, I don't like. So anytime I see somebody like manhandling, um, I'm like, ooh, quit like, it. Um, get away from me, Pepe Le Pew over here. But I felt yeah. like seeing him, I immediately was like, oh, there's where Gaston comes from. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Origin story. Yeah. Down to like the boots that he's wearing. Not ones with the fur. That was the the beast. And but the, but and the, the, five doesn't the hair. Yeah, the the hair, the hair and yeah. yeah, just the the bravado, I guess, is like a like yeah. of being like, oh, I deserve this, I deserve everything, and let's yeah. go to the pub with my friend who is Lafu, isn't it? Yeah, and, and they were they like went to the bar to like go drink with mm. each other all the time. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Is this the origin of one of Disney's twenty seven hundred awful first gay characters? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, my God. One of their first gay characters. I'm like, yeah. do, do better. Do, really? <laughs> but really? That's the best way to really, sum it up. Really, please. <laughs> uh, and I guess that leads us into our themes, which are, I guess the classic beauty versus ugly eye of the beholder. Yeah. What matters is on the inside. Yeah, I guess. But if you're like... <laughs> because he, he just, he becomes the beautiful guy that she was kind of yeah. had the hots for yeah this yeah. is the thing that i get on with every type of version of this story and it's like i understand why it was done but it's like you, I, shrek got it right that's what i want to say is like if you're yeah. gonna say that the theme of this movie is that it doesn't matter what someone looks like on the outside then when they end the movie they look the same on the outside that you found you know the love yeah. on the inside for like that's meaningful it's like oh you just gotta love it for what's on the inside and then you get the thing that everyone knows is rewarded. better for them to be beautiful on the outside as well. It's yeah, like which just reinforces society's stereotype. Because if the if the movie or the book is like for the audience and you're trying to teach the audience, oh, it doesn't matter what's on the inside, except that we are going to reward you, the audience, mm -hmm. with yeah. a like traditionally attractive person at the end, then what did you really teach the audience? Especially because like, her her hang up is that the beast is ugly, not that she can't have sex with an animal. Yeah, that wasn't her hang up. <laughs> yeah, she was like, yeah, no, she was kind of because he's like, Do she you was miss? totally like waiting for that tongue to lap up whatever. So <laughs> well, she well he's like, well, do you miss? <laughs> like I'm not a I'm not a I'm a man now. Like, do you miss like the beast? And like she says no, but I think she means yes. I think she's lying. Yeah, <laughs> that she wanted to do something with that fur. Mm. Yeah, she wanted to pet him. That's why I don't all night long. I that's why I don't I don't really know if that's what the movie is supposed to be about. I think it's like I don't know. I feel like it's more about like a, some sort of sacrifice, mm. like a personal sacrifice. Because like, she did, she you, made multiple personal sacrifices. If you sacrifice everything in your life, you will, for men, you will get rewarded by being- You might get rewarded. By sacrifice, like, sacrifice for your dad's life, sacrifice for some man, sacrifice- and That's then, kidnapped you and held you against your will in his castle. Yeah. Which, because of an arrangement yeah. between you and your father, aka Yeah, yeah because you marriage. don't want to disappoint Oh, maybe daddy. it's about the loyalty of a, you know, a verbal agreement. Yeah. I mean, mm. that loyalty of a verbal agreement goes back to actually a, a, a story from the Panchatantra that's like related to this story where the entire thing was like the daughter was like, nope, my father made an agreement and we honor agreements. I'm going to marry this snake. That's like what's going to happen. There you go. And so it's like these stories are about like both comparing like the good the good sister bad sister it's mm -hmm. related to that tale type of good sister bad sister but then also it's about the anxieties around arranged marriages yeah where your dad does say for better or for worse 
I've decided that this is the person they're going to be with. He might be a good person. He might be a bad person on all the anxiety that comes with it. But for a modern audience or even like not mo- but 1946 is yeah. modern, but uh, we have a lot of disagreements uh, with mm-hmm. uh, things that happened that long ago. Um, but for that audience, this that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Like even for like 1946, not as many arranged marriages in France as yeah. in the past. And so it's like, why this story? Yeah. Because that it's is... not even a good love story. No. I know. Because I mean, I would say, I usually say the Disney Beauty and the Beast is there's very few Disney movies I would consider a love story. And it's basically Beauty and the Beast, Pocahontas and Lady and the Tramp are the only ones I would actually consider a love story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I have it's feelings like, about the one in Pocahontas. So, well, yeah, because it's like, oh, that's a problematic to make people think that that is how things went down. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is very much about the arranged marriage thing and like women as properties of their father, and uh, that's we don't like that. Yeah, yeah it's not it's, it's not giving maybe yeah. it's not maybe relevant f- to like our our time period especially like uh the western world in this time and like that time period in this time period like it there are not as many arranged marriages as there used to be in uh the western world and so it, it's like how useful is this story yeah this, unless it's uh, very changed it doesn't i don't know i don't really think there's any really good theme to get out of this yeah so I guess that leads into was that your fantasy <laughs> yep I 100% want can't to wait to in a experience world. this myself I want to creep through hallways the way that that lady did I want to exit conversations uh by jumping into a hedge and just like running absolute made my fantasy I wish a world like that existed for me <laughs> <laughs> the drama it's about the, yes, the drama it's the, the drama of a good exit um no it's not my fantasy <laughs> as a woman let me just say it's not my fantasy uh to be property <laughs> yeah i feel like i usually when we have this discussion i end up liking the movie more than when i saw it this <laughs> yeah. i think i like it less yeah i'm glad we could ruin it (laughs) i think that people should watch this movie um because of just the drama of it yeah uh like it is it is fun to watch i would recommend uh you know having a few drinks with friends and turning this on and Mm -hmm. uh just you know reenacting it reenacting kind of like rocky horror just (laughs) everything (laughs) Yeah, it's the new Rocky Horror. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jeff, what are is this your fantasy? I'm <laughs> I'm definitely gonna say no, it's not my fantasy. But I agree with Katrina. That's like it's it's something that's worth a watch for the entertainment value, and I think even like the, you know, the cinema film history aspect yeah. of it. Um, again, like the there's some cool stuff they did with like the visuals and the cinematography and just the the craft of making the movie again like the costumes are we didn't talk about it all but the costumes are pretty amazing they're like sparkling all over the place yeah um and then that's what that's where they spent the budget was on costume 100 percent. on that little tiara yeah yeah (laughs) her her dresses she had so many costume changes her dresses were incredible and yeah the the effects on the beast well Uh, worth the money yeah yeah Yeah. gorgeous film yeah and then the connection to also like fairy tales. If you're into fairy tales, if you like Beauty and the Beast, you know, like children of the 90s, like all of us, I'm assuming were, yeah. um, like I think it's worth a watch to go back and see because you then see the things that the Disney movie pulled from that were f- specifically from this movie, not necessarily yeah. the adaptations that right. this movie came from. Like this movie inspired things directly in yeah. that Disney yes. film. And I think that that's kind of interesting to see. Yeah, because sure. so often with like Disney movies, people feel like like Disney like takes them and completely like rips them apart, turns them into their own thing, especially if they're like they're like in the Grimm's brother version, this is so different. They changed everything. And it's like you have to look at the like progression because 
something that Disney does is they like to take as much as they can from the history of that story, whether that is previous films that have been made or other stories, art uh, pieces that have been created. They do a lot of research into what has already been done. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, especially they, that example is you given a lot in Cinderella, which is very clearly directly in the credits, not based on the Brothers Grimm version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's, a, it's like one of their most faithful adaptations. Yeah, it is like like point for point Charles Perrault version and people are like, oh, in the Grimm's Brothers version, none of this happens. Where did they get this? I'm like, it says in the credits where they got the Cinderella story from. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I guess that's kind of what we learned today. We were we learned a lot. We learned a lot. And yeah. I knew this was gonna be a long episode. I really blame Villeneuve. So, so. on that, on that lovely <laughs> note, uh, we will not beat having to listen to the audiobook version of Villeneuve. So that's that's a win. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're so, welcome, everybody. You're <laughs> welcome, society in the world. Uh Jeff and Katrina, where can people find the fairy tellers? They can find us everywhere that podcasts are available. And also we've got social medias at Instagram, the fairies underscore tellers. Um, I'm like, are we anywhere else? That's Did kind I of the big one. I mean, that's just the main yeah. one. Yeah. For, at least on for, that's always for us. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, You're on TikTok. Kind of the people. We, we are, are on, on TikTok. TikTok. I think it's just the fairy tellers on TikTok. All right. Well, if you want to follow more of Not My Fantasy, you can find us at Not My Fantasy Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, share the podcast with your friends and family, coworkers. Just get the word out there. We want to find new awesome listeners like you. If you are watching on YouTube, hello, hi. Smash that uh, like button. <laughs> smash the like button. Uh, hit the bell. Subscribe. Leave us a comment. Uh, and then if you, wherever you're listening, just head over to Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review, let us know what you love, give us some good constructive feedback. Um, yeah, and just, you know, definitely just hit us up on social media if you have any questions. What If you watch this movie the first time, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, what do you think of disembodied hands as decor? Yeah. <laughs> just holding your candelabras and, you know. They did do that on Trading Spaces once, so... Uh, <laughs> really yeah. what an interesting choice <laughs> what an interesting way to end this episode tune in <laughs> our next episode will be about plot twist the 1991 Disney's Beauty and the Beast <laughs> tune in next time for that and Jeff and Katrina thank you so much for coming on this was so much fun yeah, thanks for having us thank you so much and uh, bye listeners bye